so Matt, a lot of people will think that your surname is Does Fitness, but it's actually Morcia, right? It, I, I changed it recently. Yeah, it was Does Fitness back in the day. Yeah, but I changed it to Morcia. And we are joined by Duran Cartel. What's going on, everyone? How you guys doing? We thought we'd like get you beside you. We never met before. We just met in the cafe, and we're like, "You're, you're a big guy." Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Very, yeah, because a lot of the times when you meet people on socials, it's like they're nah. a bit smaller, and especially you got good, good sized arms at all. And the ratios have you found? Because you're a bodybuilder, physique kind of people that are quite short. They have levers that are beneficial. For... Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the drip likes. Yeah, the likes of like a Jeff Nipper, someone that's short. Yeah, it's just you can obviously put on a lot of size which is great in isolation as soon as you're with someone else then not as good so for people listening you're big on social media british born personal trainer you're british born yeah 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 yeah, yeah just checking just in case you're there. <laughs> get out but you're very very strong on the youtube space yeah i'd say yeah youtube is definitely is and has always been my my main focus for sure yeah i consider myself a youtuber very much yeah yeah because this is interesting because Darren and i would consider that a weakness yeah it's not it's not just before we carry on with that um the way we started the pod man like it's like an ad for grinder or something <laughs> <laughs> just you know, bodybuilding good <laughs> physique great shape you got good performance i was like what a way to bring him up in it just before we start yeah but like it's just straight up from the off just yeah no no show show man luck we do this yeah, actually when start. we're out and about we're like we see some guy at the bar, you're like, you're a good looking Fuck guy. Good looking guy, yeah, bro. Yeah. 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 I'm like, you're, you're a tall guy. What sport do you play? Yeah. But what, uh, what, what, um, YouTube, yeah. What, when did you get into that? Because I'm not going to lie, I reckon we try jumping on that way too late, innit? And I feel like possibly, I could be really wrong here, if you jumped on it early, probably similar to like what's happening with TikTok now, yeah, people like you got the good attraction yeah, yeah. you needed and whatnot. Yeah, I think, yeah, uh, to an extent, definitely. Yeah, I mean, so I, I'm like an, I think some of them is I'm like an OG. I've been doing YouTube for like I think over eight years. Like, it makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so I, so I, I start. I didn't start doing YouTube with the intention of being a YouTuber. Like, I, I was just, I, I had been doing athletics for like ten years. I got injured, had to stop doing athletics, and had a bit of like a gaping like chasm in my life. I was like, what am I going to do now? Do you know what I mean? So. Started making videos. I don't even know why. Like, I think my wife just said, oh, why don't you make some videos? Just did it for a laugh, really. And then just, I don't know, just got into it. And and then it was the, the thing, you know, that thing where that, like, uh, what's it called? The thingy, thingy fallacy, where it's like, you, you're like, I've been doing this for a while. So, like, Sun 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 yeah, 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 might as well just carry on. Do you know what I mean? That was my, one of my, <laughs> for, a, for a period of time, that was my, kind of my sole motivation for continuing. I was like, oh, I've invested a lot of time into this, might as well carry on. And then eventually got some traction. It's interesting what you say. There, I think there are peaks and troughs to every social media platform, but YouTube's a weird one because it keeps reappearing. And I think that we had the early days, then we had smart TVs, which revolutionized the game. And I actually think we're about to go into another YouTube wave where I don't think that interview podcast or even listening to podcasts is going to be as strong as it has before. Even you've noticed this. We watch more podcasts now. Yeah, I, I love going home and just putting on the TV or, or YouTube premium, boom. And they've been there for a while, right? But yeah, yeah. for a long time, I don't think people are appreciating much. So I think people that dug their heels in early, like yourself, are going to reap the benefits of this. But what really fucked me personally is landscape content used to bang on all socials, Facebook, Lives, Insta. Insta. And then suddenly we went into this 9 by 16 portrait stuff. And for Darren and I, that suddenly became our focus. And if I put a 9 by 16 portrait content on YouTube, it, it's pretty shit. Yeah. yeah, that that is very frustrating, right? You think like they could just do us a favor and just make it universal. You know how like when you go and drive in another country, you're like, why are you driving on a different side? Like, it would be so much easier if everyone did the same thing. So, in terms of social media, that is because literally YouTube to Instagram is the opposite ratio. It's like, so I would like try and occasionally repurpose a YouTube video for Instagram, and you're literally cropping like you know two thirds of the shot out, which is so hard to get a stable shot because most of it is being shot uh, as a landscape video. So. It is an absolute ball ache, and a lot of the time, just don't bother doing it because it doesn't it doesn't convert very well. You know, it's just it's, I feel like social media, the platforms almost know when it's not their their original content. So you post like a yeah YouTube on Instagram, and it's like Instagram know it's not Instagram, you know, specific, and they just absolutely kill it. That's what I find. I, you know, TikToks. You know, when you do like a TikTok, I was like, I did like a TikTok the other day. I was like, I need to post it on Instagram. I was like, I'm gonna put it in video leap. 
then export it through there in case there's a way they find out it's TikTok and fuck up with the Instagram, algorithms. They look like, for the watermark. They do. That's a, that is a legit thing. Yeah, the little you know when you save a TikTok, a TikTok get automatically saves as a video and it has a little TikTok thing. If you post that on Instagram, yeah, they absolutely Instagram are it. looking for them yeah, watermarks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there's actually websites where you can extract a posted TikTok without the watermark. Oh, is it? Yeah. So a lot of creators, if you create a video within TikTok and you want to export it and put it elsewhere, you can use third party websites to export it out. But Let's be honest, if the content's good, if it bangs, it always bangs. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, although not, I've, I've, like, I've had, that is the case, I'd say, from TikTok to Instagram and vice versa, but I don't think YouTube, I think YouTube and uh, the others, obviously, they're all much more like short-form content. I find that YouTube is not always a correlation. Yeah, I have videos that have been viral as fuck on YouTube but then just literally do nothing on other platforms. It's that the audiences, the demographics. One thing that excites me about TikTok is that, Production for YouTube has to be fucking good because it is TV. Yeah. So you need, and we're such late adapters to everything, right? Fucking microphones, cameras, editing, all of these things. We arrived so late to the party. And then it was only really after listening to like Mr. Beast on Joe Rogan when I was like, there has to be a level of obsession with production for YouTube. Otherwise, they're just going to go with someone else. But you know what? I think it also depends on the sort of person. I feel like if I take it too serious, I'm not going to enjoy it. And yeah, then, like, yeah. the you're, yeah, I'm not going to come out as much, which is the thing that people, what sells, right? It's yeah. you or you or me. It's not, the production should be good, but I don't think it should be, like, so finesse. Yeah, where... no, it's not the be and end of for sure. Like, I think it depends on your content. Like, some content lends itself to production. Like, you know, if you're, like, a car channel that makes content about cars, you want the production to be high because that's what, do you know what I mean? That makes sense for that. If you're more above logo and you're just doing mad shit, like, it doesn't need... You know, there are some channels, like, like, have you seen Nelk, like Nelk Boys? They, their production's very good. It's like a movie, but they also do mad, engaging shit. Is that the lads in America? Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. Canadian guys. They just do, it's all, not, not jackass, but that kind of vibe, just doing stupid shit for every yeah, video. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they have, like, 40-minute long apps, like, literally movies, you know? But their content is engaging as fuck. So they've kind of, like, got both things. But a lot of that content, it doesn't, it can be it, it, almost better when it looks more, am, like, you know, amateurish. When it's like, like kind yeah, of, yeah, camera's yeah. kind of wobbling. Yeah, and, and I like... think that, maybe not so much now, but that, there was a point when that was, that performed better because it's like, people feel like they're, it's more real, you know, whereas when it's super, pro, like, produced and that's cinematic, like, it see it doesn't seem as, as jet authentic, do you know what I mean? It's more like... You feel like you're not, you're, I'm not talking to you. Yeah, it feels yeah. like you're yeah. just another number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, the dream scenario is, is combining both, right? If you can have, obviously, first and foremost, it should always be the content. If your content's great, then irrespective of the, as long as you, it's watchable, then the, the level of production doesn't really matter. But if you can combine both, obviously have sick content and have great production, then yeah. that's absolutely that's ideal. When I'm talking production as well, I'm talking like people scrutinize on your thumbnails. So now your thumbnails have to be good. Your clickbait has to be good. The title, you're very good with your title. Thumbnails, mate. That, like, people don't appreciate the, like, so many people will, like, make an amazing YouTube video and then the thumbnail and title is an afterthought. Like, for me, especially when I was, like, blowing up on YouTube, I'd work backwards. So I'd, like, think what's going to be a sick thumbnail, what's a sick title, Smart. then I'd put a video to that. Because if you haven't got a good title and thumbnail, you're literally wasting your time. You can make the world's greatest video... But if your thumbnail and title is trash, no one's going to watch it, right? Like, no, obviously your audience might, you know, know your content and then they're going to watch it. But if you're, like, it depends on the video, but I've had viral videos where it's like 90% or 80% of views come from non-subscribers. So they have no idea who you, are, who you are, what your content is. So the only criteria they have to choose whether to watch your video or not is the thumbnail and title. And if it's not good, you know, like, it's, it's, it's one of the worst things about YouTube. I have videos that are mediocre, that have gone viral as fuck. Because they have great title and thumbnails, and I have videos that are like I literally like this is the best video ever, but the title and thumbnails are like not great, and they've just absolutely bombed. Like that is a bit like Insta Resort, isn't it? You know when you put so much effort into it, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you yeah, want yeah. it to bang, you're like, oh it's, shit, that's views. the worst, mate. Yeah, <laughs> some worst. some big YouTubers are now going back and re-thumbnailing and retitling old videos. That's what Mr. Beast does, and I think a few guys, yeah, because stuff that's I've I don't know, I've always been, I, I have lots. I think some of my like thoughts and decisions are quite based on kind of anecdotal stuff so i always found that after a video's you know gone it's on been on for a day or so whatever you do to it makes no difference you get that initial push and that determines how it's going to perform would you ever repost youtube uh with slight tweak edits so i think may, i think maybe i have a couple times in the past where like i'm not not for a long time to be fair but so if i was to ask you this and i was to say you're following people on youtube they like you right they're invested if they watch your youtube videos they're pretty fucking invested 
if you posted something again in a bid to get new people onto your channel, would it really rub the big fans the wrong way? No, do you know what? That's actually not a bad show. I, I, I've made like 1,400 videos, so even going back two years, there's probably videos that a lot of my audience wouldn't remember and would never have seen. So and there's also a lot of the audience out. that would re-see it, see it go viral and go, get that money. Yeah, yeah. And that's one thing that's quite, it's hard for people to... Not a bad show. You could yeah. do what, you could do, you know what? You could you do one where... You, are, down quickly, <laughs> you could do one where you're actually watching your old video and you're recording yourself watching. Yeah, I was going to do like, because I've a lot, of guys, yeah. lot, <laughs> lot of guys delete their like original videos, like all my video. If you go on my like sort by my, like latest video, uh, earliest video, all my original videos are on and they're like the shittest thing. Like my first 50 videos are literally but you haven't removed painful them? to watch. No, no, oh, it's good. funny to watch. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, and like I know when I was starting out, like I had a few channels that I watch and like I would always go back and watch their first videos and be like, oh, look, this guy used to be absolute shit. And that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's quite like, it's cool to watch because you're like, well, do you know what? This guy was initially absolute trash and now they're doing well. Like, I think it's good. It's a, I find that quite inspirational to see that you can, you don't start out being abs- being sick. Yeah. You know, you start out a lot of people being absolute shit. First hundred episodes of Rogan. Shit. Dog shit. Yeah. 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 Like, you're, you're legit writing that down. If I was to ask you financially, how much Three do you reckon? Use old <laughs> videos how much financially do you reckon 1400 videos reposted over the next three years would be worth to you yeah a lot of money mate money. <laughs> yeah do you know what so, yeah it's so a great so, shout you know yeah and this is why i'm so keen to be on to have a chat because I, I think about this all the time the only thing the only reason i guess now thinking that i maybe would be hesitant to do that is that not so much you may like, rub some people the wrong way no 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 just more like it will be clear that some of these are old videos like even a video from two years ago like you know I wouldn't have one of my kids. It, it would look different. People would be like, that's weird. This is an old video. Do you know what I mean? Like Throwback, but, vintage, but maybe, all of yeah, these maybe, ways. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe, again, for new audience, they, obviously they have no context, so it doesn't matter. So one thing I know people will be really interested in, I, you did a video once talking about the monetization of your videos. Yeah. Now, one of the amazing things I like about YouTube and admire you guys getting paid is people know the cost of buying in and watching your videos. They watch the adverts because they support you and the fact you get paid. Some and a lot of the time, that's great because you don't get led down this financially rewarded path like a lot of Instagram influencers where they get to 100K and they're suddenly like, fuck, what can I... Because a lot of Instagram influencers are fucking skin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and they're like... It's hard to monetize that if you haven't got that. I think a lot of people that make money like... I guess technically I make money on Instagram, but it, that's come about as a result of YouTube. It's hard. If you're Instagram only, it's hard for a brand to really get on board there because... It, it, it's not, I don't know, you don't mean, it's different now where it's more video, you know, but still it's harder to, to engage with you an audience. You don't know how long they're watching and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Someone's looking at a picture every three days. What are you really going to, do you know what I mean? You're not gonna, how many sales are you going to get from that? I don't think many. So feel free to tell me to fuck off here. I was looking at some of your videos from this week. You're getting like two, three, four hundred thousand views per video. Mm-hmm. On average, roughly, what kind of income would that provide for you to create? So, so for me now, yeah, my, my monthly ad revenue from YouTube is like, I don't know, it, it fluctuates. It could be anywhere from like 15 to 20 grand. Well, a tw- uh, that's 20K dollars actually. So like, what is that? I don't know, 15K. Not UK. Worth, yeah. But but the thing that's misleading is like, it, that isn't probably the majority of that, or not the majority, but maybe half of that revenue is residual from, like you said, I've, I've had video, I've got like 14, whatever, 100 videos. A lot of those are still generating, you know, even though they're making like 10p each a month, you add that, yeah, it still adds up. You know what I mean? So, if someone was getting, like you said, two, three, four hundred k views, I'm making like one or two videos a week. If someone was doing that, starting from now, you'd be looking at, a, you know, five, maybe a few grand a month. But because of that residual revenue from the older videos, that accumulates, you know. So essentially, the the, the longer you do YouTube for, assuming you've done okay, that revenue is just going to ramp and ramp and ramp because you've got all those old videos that are just accruing. Was revenue. it better before? Like with YouTube, I swear there was a moment. Remember when we were in Bali, we met this YouTube ad revenue, video. ad revenue. Yeah, mm, I think I think it fluctuates. It, this mate, there's so many variables like time of the year, like where you. I know that US ad revenue is way higher. So for example, I've had, I did a I did a series of like doing like different um, army fitness tests. Like we do like US Army tests, the Navy SEALs, blah blah blah. I think I saw one with yeah. Mike. Mike. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, one. Yeah, that, where that video went nuts. Yeah, yeah but so so they. I think a lot. I think I know. Like a, most of the views were from the US, right? Because it's. I guess it's like teenage guys that want to join the army. and They're googling like how to pass this test or whatever. So the ad revenue on those videos was like double because US ad revenue is higher. 
Um, I know videos about finance, the ad revenue will be higher because of the type of ads that are served, like time of year, like there's loads of variables. But I don't know, it's it's hard to say, oh, is it higher now versus or lower now because obviously my my video performance changes, do you know what I mean? So like I can't I haven't got a comparison because I was getting less or more views at different times, do you know what I mean? Yeah, does it does it ever get weird? Where like, say for example, me and Smith do like a lot of content together. We do like we don't have our businesses are completely separate. Yeah, yeah. But we do like events and stuff or together, stuff like this together. Where yeah. money isn't really made. It's more so giving value to audience, right? Say if you did that, you did that video with first and right. Yeah, yeah. And then you got mad ad revenue. What, how, what is that conversation nah, like? Because it's not a, like. Is it like okay, we go halves, or is it like that was my video? No, nah, that's my video. Like, okay, no, ch no chance. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> no but, but like, we'll joke about. It, do you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, a yeah, yeah, joke. Yeah. Be like, give me that. You know, when when I have that money. But like, no. I mean, if I was in one of his videos, I've been in the videos that have done all right. You know, generated some money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't be like, oh, give me that money. Like, okay, cool. It's his, do you know what I mean? It's my video. That's his video. Like, because I was chatting to him about. I was like, the difference between like, say, what we do. Uh, you might be doing this as well now, I don't know. But um, of like where YouTubers and stuff is, it's all about views. It's all about views. Whereas our, we're looking at converting who's viewing yeah. more so than the amount of views. So yeah. a thousand people could watch one of my videos. Yeah. If I can get 20 of those as clients, yeah. I'm winning, bruv. Yeah, Whereas, mate, that's the thing. Again, yeah. people don't understand that as a difference. You don't have like... You don't have to have a big audience. You can make a good salary on a sm you know, relatively small audience. And conversely, I know people that have, you know, guys that be on Love Island got like a one and a half million followers yeah. overnight, but they cannot fucking sell a train at one because their audience is 12-year-old girls who yeah. are not going to buy anything. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, 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 it yeah. almost, it doesn't mean nothing, but it can be a good barometer. But yeah, it can be very misleading. It's crazy as well that I know people personally, so does he, that pretty much put everything on the line to become a TV personality. Their Instagram booms because they were on TV or Netflix. Then when TikTok comes along, you can tell they don't don't have the facilities for that big man. <laughs> because now there's no TV exposure to boom the new platform. They're, they're kind of dead in the water. I've been looking at some of your stuff recently. You, like most people as well, a little bit late to the platform. <laughs> I mean, literally started a few months ago. Yeah. But then you're banging big views on some of your videos. That, that was, you know, that's just like, you know, the only reason I did that. So basically, right, I... I'm a YouTuber, yeah. Instagram, I like, I did it because it was just like, I probably should do this, but like, I had no interest. I'll just post pictures. And I personally find your content's different, yeah, because your content is actually meaningful. Like, my content up until, in fact, even now, really, I'm just like, this is so shit. Like, just post a picture, <laughs> a picture of me. Shirtless. That, yeah. <laughs> like, what is this? Do you know what I mean? How is this a plat? Like, what do you mean? What? But you probably. You probably treat YouTube like we treat Insta. Yeah, yeah YouTube yeah. It because it's like you put so much into it. I'm proud of my videos. Like I, that's it's insane. I'm like this is sick. Whereas, yeah, I do the odd post. I'm like that's cool or like a video, or whatever. But a lot of my posts, I'm just like I'm doing it because I have to because I'm obligated to do it for a contract or like I'm like oh, I haven't posted for I should probably post. But like, what is this? Do you know what I mean like I look at the majority of like fitness influencers. Instagram content. It's just a picture of them. Like it's literally a photo of them in a place. Like you're yeah. like. Sorry, what, 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 is what, the am, value? I, what am I Where's... getting out of this? Do you know what I mean? Hi, I'm in America. Like, what, what, what do I do? Do you know what I mean? What, like, why am I looking at this? But that's the thing. Like, so like, I've always kind of not resented, but just been like, Instagram is a bit shit. But I, I basically, what happened with me, right, is that I blew up on Instagram. I got to like a million followers in a short period of time. Yeah, I got, I just went past. I was at like a million and I don't know, a million and like thirty k or something, right? And then overnight, Instagram were like change the algorithm so i was i was getting like ridiculous engagement on my posts i was like growing nicely and then you can literally see on my insights there's like it's like this and there's a point in the over the course of a day where it just like drops and it's like Instagram how long ago like, was this ah uh, maybe like six months a year i don't know i remember we talked to us about this story views just went boop, overnight yeah. and like what annoys me is this first happened with facebook in january 2018 so Facebook was my platform to begin with. I yeah. was like, this is it. And I was late to Instagram and I was like, fuck you guys. Facebook's sick. Similar to what a lot of people are now doing with Insta with TikTok. But then my engagement literally got fucked overnight. So in a bid for Facebook to save Facebook, they made it a family platform. Brands got cut and your cousin's birthday got promoted. Yeah. So Facebook would be like, oh shit, whose birthday is it? Or oh, what's my nan doing? Oh, happy birthday, nan. But then all the brands got shunted to Instagram and they were getting mad growth there. So I was like, fuck, like I didn't get Instagram until 2017. So I was late to yeah. fucking Insta. But now that shift is happening from Insta to TikTok. And now if you look at Instagram, they're fight people are now realizing how shit creators have been treated on it, how much 
small pieces of the pie they've been given and the way they'll fuck you like that overnight for no reason when you've you've been so like loyal posting on it and using it as a business platform tiktok or waving like hey guys we'll give you millions of views if yeah. your video is good yeah. and it, even if it's your first one yeah and now all Instagram are doing is fighting as hard as they can to try and imitate what TikTok are doing. Yeah. All the platforms are slowly becoming the same thing. Like even for YouTube now, you have like a, a shorts like page yeah. tab. Do you know what I mean? They're slowly just merging into the same thing. Do you use Facebook? Again, yeah, I do. Yeah. So, okay. So I, I only used it up until recently for like just my app, like the, you know, like a members like group, right? But then recently, I, I always get I get emails every day being like, oh, we want to repurpose your content for Facebook. And I just ignore them. But recently, I was like, do you know what? I might as well. Because I spoke to some guys. They're getting decent ad revenue, like not, not dissimilar from YouTube. So I was like, what? Well, might as well, right? What, so on, I, on Facebook? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so relative to views, you know, not not a million miles off what they're generating yeah, on YouTube yeah, yeah. for views, right? So I was like, well, if it's just a passive income, I might as well. So I just said yes to these guys. They've just started. So they'll just take my YouTube videos, cut them down, put, you know, captions on and put them on Facebook. And it's generating ad revenue, like... So, yeah, but Mate, there's a video I did with Alima where I posted it and 11 months later it went viral. Yeah, and I looked at my Facebook analytics and I was like, fuck, this video's got 48 million views <laughs> 11 months after I posted that's it. That's mad, and that's one we filmed in like one London with like the where he chokes me out at the end of yeah, I'm leaving yeah, my yeah. weights out. I was like, fuck, Facebook has the potential even today. Yeah. To, you've got some viral posts, yeah. Well. The interview ones I've been doing on Roll, like. The other one I posted the other day has got like two, three million views. And I, I, the mad thing is I don't really look. And I look one yeah. day I'm like, oh, shit, this is pretty yeah. good. But I think more than anything, it's like, because you know you said you, you just started TikTok, right? And you're getting millions of views. A lot of those people, you might not have a lot of followers at the minute on TikTok. I'm not actually sure. No, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But your face has been seen other places. Same as him. Like, you've been doing it for a while. So someone sees your face and goes, what? Where have I seen that guy? Could have been a poster for the book somewhere on a train. Yeah, Could have been a YouTube clip, a Reels clip on this. I'm, I'm, he looks familiar. I'm going to give it a follow or whatnot. So that's why I think you guys are in TikTok, or even me doing TikTok now, the growth will probably be a lot quicker because one way or another, someone's seen you like somewhere, especially yeah, yeah. on Facebook now as well, if you've been doing it for yeah, eight well, it's years. Yeah, for, for me, like, so... Going back to Instagram, so that it, when it just started going, it just overnight bombed, yeah. And then my followers, my followers plateaued, yeah. Then it started going down, and it was getting like, I was points where it was, lo I was losing like a thousand followers a week, right? It got to a point where it got down to like a million and like four k, and I was like, if it drops below a million, I I'm, have to call Jim Sharks so they can buy some. I'm deleting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, 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 I'll fucking delete. But do you mean like that? Can you imagine like because the, the satisfaction when it's like ticks over to mil. I was like, if it goes below a million, like that's it. I'm, I, that is, that is, Instagram is gone for me. It's dead. I'm deleting it. Do you know what I mean? Is the man you're saying that with a million followers, yeah. isn't it? Anyway, so then, so then, I was like, well, what? Like, because I was aware of reels and videos, but I literally never posted a reel in my life, pretty much. Because I was like, yeah, you know, I, I spent YouTube is a lot of my time. I haven't got time to make videos like that. Takes your content takes more time. Or you know, pro, like, you know, so yeah, but some some Instagram reel, like reels are proper, like edited, decent videos that would Short, take a lot engaging. of time. Engaging. Yeah, like, whereas like, YouTube, you can be more like conversational. Yeah, right? but it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, but it's like you, but like YouTube, that that is my fault. That's a lot of time for me. I haven't got time to do that again on Instagram. So I just never. A picture for me takes ten seconds done, right? Reels, I was like, I haven't got. I know they're performing well, but I haven't got time to do it. When I started getting down, I was like, oh, I'm going to drop below a million views. What what uh, followers? What do I have to do to at least stem this tide? Right? Started posting reels. And within like two weeks of posting reels, I was back up to like a million and 40K. Because so like, they're rewarding you to keep people there and not go to TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then, so then when I started posting reels, I was like, well, TikTok is the same thing. I can just repost these reels. So then yeah. that's why I did that. Because I was like, it's no extra work. I'm, I'm all for, you know, more stuff if it doesn't involve extra work, right? So I can repost reels or use the same content on TikTok. Problem now I've got is that I've used all my old videos and TikToks. Now I'm like, I have to create new stuff. And that's why, if you look at my TikTok, it was like posting every day. Now it's like... How many subscribers do you have week? on YouTube? Well, uh, 2.1 mil. Sick. 2.19. <laughs> yeah, 2.19. Yeah, that's, but with all that and you saying time and this, I'm assuming you're also saying that because you have a family, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm at the point... So like, going back to you saying there about like the importance of views and valuing views over like content. For me now, I've like switched. So I had a period... Like, I don't know, like 2019, 2020, 2021, like that kind of two year period where I was like blowing up, like YouTube was mad. It was like, at the time, you can't really appreciate it. You know, when it's not mad, you're like, oh, this is cool, whatever, but you just get on with it because you're yeah. in the moment. Yeah. Now looking back, that was ridiculous. Like, I had a point where I got like a million subscribers in a year. Like, wow. I was getting ridiculous views. 
was getting a million views in every video for like a few months, like within a few days. Like it was That's ridiculous. Yeah. And like when you're at that point, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You can make you know, the, the potential to make money and to do shit is like mad. Like I was, all my contracts, I was renegotiating every six months because I could. I was like, do you know what? I've now got another half a million subscribers. Give me this much money. And, and everyone just does it because that, because you're in, you've got all the power in that position. Do you know what I mean? So like that period was mad. And that, at that point, all I was doing was like, I was obsessing over making viral videos. Every video was like, I was killing myself to make a viral video. And I, it was like, it worked, it served its purpose, but that was like, stressful as fuck. And I was gonna say, how did you feel you mentally? You can't sustain that, like, so that worked, it was great. It was like, that's got me to where I am now, but like, if you do that for a few years, you just fucking have a heart that you die. Do you know what I mean? That's you what can't... Logan Paul and that, they don't yeah. vlog anymore. You can't keep doing that because the pressure, like, you get one video that doesn't perform as, I remember looking back now, you know, I'd get a video that have like, 800k and I'd be like, oh, this is fucking shit. Like, I mean, do you know what I mean? Like, like you're literally, like, you set the bar so high. Yeah. Whereas now I've done that, like it served its purpose. I've got to where I am now. Like, now it's more like you said about like, just converting and like monetizing stuff and trying to trying to put things in place that are long-term, that are not reliant on me making videos. You know, it's I don't like business, isn't it? You know, you have peaks where you have, you make good money and then you have peaks where you don't and you forget kind of about those days when really, yeah. You can't if you were to do that consistently, it's, it's impossible. Like you need to have those, yeah, 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 you have to be you have to have those moments where you're like, nothing's happening much to kind of rethink, re regulate yeah. everything, yeah. I guess, to do the next And it's thing. also like now I like I'm experienced that for a long time. I know that you have those peaks and troughs. So whereas back then, like if a video performed badly or what I perceived to be badly, or my growth subscriber growth slowed down, I'd be like I'd like proper, like stressed out, like not depressed, but like bummed out, really like How you know, old are you? Thirty six, man. Oh, really? Oh, you're good. You Everyone look good, says that bro. I'm old, yeah. I'm getting old. You look how, good, bro. How, how, how old are you guys? Have we got time, dear? We got, I'm 33. I'm 30. Okay, okay. So yeah. fairly old, yeah. But okay. you, so, okay, when, when you, when, when, um, hold when on, I'm just getting my phone out. Two mil by 30. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, when, when all that, like, that stressful time, yeah, yeah. like, I know it's not the And just but... quickly, I say, like, I'm not I know like, what you oh, mean. poor, like, I was having a sick time, but it yeah. was work wise, that was stressful, yeah. yeah. But, like, some people might not understand this, be like, oh, 800,000 views, but, to do that, to accomplish that, you need to have like high standards, and yeah. like, we obviously get that. So when people say like, "Oh, it's all right," but yeah, it's all right for you, bruv. It's not all right for me, and I get yeah, that. But yeah. was that stressful? Say, did it affect your family life? Uh, yeah. I mean, like we like, I don't know, maybe like, so like obviously, so my, I guess the biggest in like, so with my wife, for example, I mean, she's like supportive as fuck, like like to a re the point where she will like. There'll be stuff that comes up and I'm like, oh, I can't be asked. She'll make me do stuff because she knows it's like a good thing to do, you know? Yeah. But like, I guess it impact just in the sense that like, if I'm bummed out or I'm like annoyed or whatever, then obviously it's not nice to be around me. Do you know what I mean? But like, yeah. not in a, you know, major Does she way. work and stuff or is it like... She works, so, she, so my wife and my brother work like for my company. Sick, like, yeah. wicked. Yeah. That's yeah, wicked. Yeah. Slowly building a little family empire. But like, that's, I think that's the way to keep that's it in the family, man. Well, it is like, so I got to the point a few years ago, like during this point when things were blowing up and I was like, I need help. Like I can't, I can't manage this. And like we were saying before, like there's lots of opportunities that I can't capitalize on because I haven't got time to do that, right? And I can go and find someone that's, you know, hopefully try and find someone that understands and blah, blah, blah. But, but my wife was already doing loads with me at the time. Like, uh, and plus, a lot of my content, especially back then, was was very, like, vlog family-based, like filming and knocking about at home and doing stuff. It's a bit weird getting someone, just random guy, to come in in my house. Do you it's know what I mean? It's like, same. Yeah. It's so I was like, well, she's already doing half it. She under I haven't got to try and explain to her how this works and, like, do you know what I mean? It's just And it convenient. goes to the same household anyway. It's not yeah. like like it goes into the same family unit yeah. where everyone gets looked after. Hopefully anyway. into yeah. the same trust fund. Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah. Beneficiaries. Yeah. Found that I learned a lot this year. Yeah. Now yeah. that's that's class because Darren's done the same. He's uh, got his cousin and his videographer. You hired yeah. your sister, giving her some work. Yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. sick, isn't it? Like how like that is the gratification there. Do you know what I mean when you can like I say? I mean I'm not giving hand me outs. Like she's sick at the she with the stuff she yeah, does. Yeah, do you yeah, mean? Yeah. But the fact you can do that for someone. Do you know what I mean that you, that you like actually like like that's pretty sick. Mate, right? my like my videographer now. And she's actually my first friend. Like, she's like family. So, like, yeah. she's known me since birth. So, when I'm saying something on video, she understands my humor so well yeah. that I don't have to give her too much direction. That's integral. And it's, yeah, yeah. So, I'm like, for me, I'm like, I'll do what I can to like look after her and make sure she's happy. Yeah. And I think most importantly, like, having a good time as well as you're right, it is weird having people around you or even like when I give my sister my bank details. I don't have to worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if yeah. you had to do that with a stranger, yeah. it's like... Well, yeah, that's it. You don't, like, that's the one of the biggest parts of employing anyone, yeah. It's just that reliability and trustworthiness and knowing they're not going to mug you up or do something weird. Like, 
if it's someone like I know my brother, for example, he's invested in our, you know, in Morsi in the company. He's invested in that. So like, I know that he's going to do the right, you know, the, like work hard and do the right stuff. And I know he's not going to do something weird because he actually cares. Whereas you employ someone like, like maybe after all, you know, that they may get to that point, but there's no not guarantee. Initially. And initially, it's a job, right? It's different, isn't it? Like to being it, actually wanting it to do well. It's good as well when you're not surrounded by yes men or yes women. Uh, because yeah. if Dylan records something that isn't quite right, his videographer go, nah, shit, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same yeah. with you. You do yeah. something and your wife will be like, fucking do that again. Yeah. You need that. I have to remake shit tomorrow, bro. She was like, Dylan, like, what's going on? I was like, bro, okay. <laughs> All right, cool. We'll redo it tomorrow then, yeah. innit? So it's like, cool. And you need that. You're right. No, yeah. I'm, I'm very fortunate the same. Uh, my girlfriend at the moment, she holds the camera for me. But then I'll be tired or we'll get back late and she'll be like, you need to do your video. Yeah. And I'll be like, okay, yeah, you're right. She's like, let me take five minutes. She's there with the camera ready. And I'm like, fuck, this is nice. But a lot of the time, up until maybe the last six months, I've literally just been me and a tripod. But when you talk about production and content, I go to jiu-jitsu at 6 p.m. So or I'll, I'm leaving the house at maybe quarter to six. When things creep up to 4 or 5 p.m., this is my life in Australia where everything's super cruisy. If I haven't created content at 3 or 6 a.m., 4 or 7 a.m., 5 is 8 a.m. So they're my, my golden hours. And I remember recently, I'm laying there on the sofa. It's 5 p.m. I'm like, I'm going training in an hour. I'm like, I'm going to have a shower for 10 minutes, even though I don't need one. So just think of a content idea. I'm there. I'm in the shower. 10 past 5, run down with a tripod, set it up. I'm like, fuck. It's currently May. So I'm like, I've got enough natural light for 10 minutes. I know everything in my house. I go there and I'm like, this is what I'm going to talk about. I posted it on socials. I come out of training at 7 p.m. It's got a million views on TikTok. And I'm there like, guys, I just got a million views in an hour from a video that I made 40 minutes before I had to be at training. But then I come back to my house and I'm like, lads, you know, and they're like, shut the fuck up. And Cam's like, TikTok this, shut up. No one cares, Smith. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm there, I'm like, this is the most views I've ever had. And they're like, fuck off. <laughs> my housemates won't even let me celebrate it. They're like, and then the next day I'm like, all right, what can I do to truly impress them cunts? Yeah. No, it's good to <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we've yeah. also been lucky though. I don't know if, uh, if you've got that sort of relationship with anyone else like in your like, YouTube scene or what you're doing now is if we have like shit videos or if we need to kind of nag each other about have you got this new camera like why haven't you got this new camera bro like you almost pressure each other to kind of be better do you have anyone yeah. like that other than your yeah, team yeah so I've got, I've got like mates that do the same thing like oh, it's, it's not I don't yeah I don't there's no one in like close proximity to me so like I obviously I'll travel it and do bits or go to events, whatever it is, and I'll see people there. And that's cool, like hanging out with guys that do the same thing. And yeah, may maybe not to that extent in terms of on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, like a lot of what I do, I have my videographer and obviously, like I said, my wife and that will get involved. But like a lot of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is basically by myself, which sounds quite sad. I'm, I'm the same. So if I say I went and bought all <clears throat> Shure SM7B mics and I messaged Darren and I was like, do you understand how shit those fucking headphones? We both had the headphones. Yeah. They were so easy, plug them into a road deck, cool podcast. And then two months later, I'm like, Darren, these are fucking shit. And I was like, we must look like absolute knobs <laughs> online. So I'm like, buy them. These are the adapters you need, cool. Then I bought a, a, I bought a secondary camera for podcasts. So I was doing it on one. I've realized how lazy that is. Looking back now, I'm like, it's cringeworthy that you would film a podcast with one camera with two yeah. guests. So I go to the camera store. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get another GH5. He's like, do you want the GH5 Mark II? I'm like, is it better? Was, yeah. I was like, give me that then. <laughs> I text her and I'm like, you need to throw away that GH5. It's shit. You need the GH5 Mark II. <laughs> and I'll message him, oh, do you have this feature? No, because you've got the shitty camera. <laughs> but like, you, we like doing that because... If I raise my standards, it forces him to yeah, raise yeah. his. No, I, definitely that, what you said there, that, yeah, that same thing. So, like, not so much, so now I have someone that films for me, he uses his camera, right? Pro, up until, like I said, a year ago, I was filming all my own content, so I'd be way more mindful of, like, the stuff I was using, the camera, the lens, the mic, all that stuff. And you just, it's funny how, like, your perspective changes. Like you said there, initially I had a camera that I was like, this is a sick camera. Then within two years, you're like, what? Like, as if I've been using this. Like, the, wor the worst thing is, like, a good camera is like maybe 1,500, 2,000 pounds. And I was like, that's a lot of money. And then someone was like, this is your fucking job. Yeah, this is yeah, how yeah. you reach people. Yeah. This is how you build yeah. your business. And then same with the podcast stuff. I was like, I could have one clip from one podcast that could fucking light up the stratosphere yeah. of social media. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's crazy. Did, did, you, did you, sorry, I just said, did you find when, um, like when I got my videographer, 
uh, got like a virtual assistant to help me with this stuff and that. Did you find What's it a weird? Virtual? When you say virtual, I'm thinking of like when you go on like HSBC and it's like a little person. No, no, so call. like, she, well, she's, she's not there. She's 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 okay, actually she's a real person. Yeah, like yeah, a robot yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, she, uh, so. She's actually one of my old clients. going to say that. So like, she's technically my assistant, but call it virtual because it's kind of virtual, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> I just thought like a robot. <laughs> yeah. Like a robot. Yeah. That would be sick, by the way. Tesla, like. But like, when when you had people helping you out, when I started getting people to help me out, did you feel weird? I felt weird where I was like, have you done this? Yeah, yeah. Have you done this? Yeah. I'm like, is anyone doing this? Because yeah. I usually do this and yeah. I was like panicking. Were you like that? Yeah, or? exactly that. Initially, it was like created more work for me because I was like, not only was I, you know, I'd give someone a job, but then I'd be like explaining to them how to do it and then overseeing it. And I'm like, this is literally, t I've got someone to do this job and it's, t it's taken me longer than it would have done if I'd done it myself in the first place. So like, But that's a process, right? And I think that's... Yeah. It's a good like that's a good thing. It's better than you know. I'd rather be that way than just be like you know, not give a fuck, just hand things over. Like that ownership and that like, you know, wanting your stuff to be at that level. That's what you need, right? Because otherwise, it's just you know, you're gonna yeah, your stuff's not gonna be as good. Yeah, so for I've, sure to have that. I've got a lady in the Philippines called Mary, and her sole job. <laughs> have you still got her? Yeah. Oh, sick. Is to go through all my inboxes and screenshot messages she might think I've missed. How did you? How have you come across this person? How have you managed? Upwork. To and they're contracted oh, through Upwork, okay. and they have like a strong reputation. So if she fucks me over and I say, Mary fucked me over, her 10, 15,000 hours of work before will all be tainted. So it's very trustworthy. And then yeah. she contracts through that. I pay her about 150 pounds a week. And like LinkedIn, some a platform I never check. Facebook, a platform I never check. And just day to day for a couple of hours, she just scrolls through it. So if I'm doing this podcast, if I leave, Mary will send me screenshots of like, even little things like blue tick accounts that I don't follow. So then I have peace of mind that that's been looked at. She doesn't do any admin yeah, for me yeah. or anything like that, but it's quite nice that I've got someone just looking at that. That's sick. So my wife does that, probably not to that extent because that's a that's a lot of hours, right? But she'll do that DMs, emails, like junk emails because a lot you miss a lot of stuff. Like it's scary how many things. Like I've done some sick things that like that's from like says finding an email in my junk box or like a DM request that I hadn't seen, like that would have just gone slipped through the net and it's ended up being a mad opportunity that I wouldn't know because you can't, obviously you can't possibly cover that. There's so many, so many things coming in. There's no way you can regulate that yourself. Do you reckon she does it? Oh, she fits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Delete. Very well, to be fair. Send I, to although, junk. although it's probably more like guys, to be fair, I get, I get a lot. I find, I think probably because of the family angle, I don't get, I, not that I'm aware of it, I don't get that many like, that much female activity is definitely more. Is it more male sketchy, audience? mate? Well, like, in terms of like weird DMs, the yeah, amount you, of weird feet pictures in that, mate. The, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not like next level. The amount of weird male DMs I've got. Really? Like, yeah. Instagram in particular is like an absolute like. It attracts them. Yeah, you've like, gone said for gay as, guys. As if it? you've sent this. Do you mean what are you expecting to come about from this DM you just sent me? Like that's mad, but yeah. And it, it's from, it's a lot of people. I think Jordan Peterson was to say that YouTube is eighty percent men, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's true. With your kind of followership on YouTube and your experiences, is it a male-dominated platform? Um, I don't know. Well, like, maybe for his audience. I think I think it depends on the content. I think it's hard to say as a sweeping thing, but I think in the the fitness like realm, but then not even that. Because you know, obviously, if you if you're a female fitness person, you're going to have a more female-based audience. So like, it depends. For me, yes, it's majority male, but I have a higher female demographic than the average male influencer because of, because of the family angle, do you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. kids are in videos and stuff, so women like... So, like, there was a point where I had my son in loads of videos. At that point, I'd, my female demographic just went through the roof, do you know what I mean? So, like, that Make that's different. Babies. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's interesting, though, because, like... And this isn't me saying objectively. This is from my experiences and what my sister says, what the girl I'm seeing says, all these things. Like, But then they... I never see a girl in my life that's like, have you seen this on YouTube? Like... I feel like the women that I know in my life are uh, TikTok and Instagram. They like feeds. Like, and rather men, myself. Oh, Pinterest, Pinterest. Um, yeah, yeah, Pinterest, <laughs> things like that. But me and my friends, like, I don't know. I think men, objectively, men do have more interest in things and how things work. And, you know, me, I'm going down rabbit holes on YouTube. Yeah. How does sun cream work? But I, I'm yeah, on the beach yeah. and I'm like, I'm, I need answers. Yeah, my suggested is like, shark attack stuff like I've got some weird shit where you just you, know, you watch like three videos and you're like oh I'm going to regret this now because I'm going to get hammered with like ridiculous but also I feel like we're the sort of people that when you see that sort of content you want to share it with someone almost I almost can't enjoy it if I haven't shared it with someone so they yeah, appreciate like, that whereas a lot stuff, of girls yeah, yeah. they're just like oh this is nice I'm like why haven't you showed me that then <laughs> I think yeah so I mean in my head now if I think about it I do I feel like it would be a more male like 
maybe that's just like, I don't know, like, you know, the, the gaming thing and like sport, like watching, you know, football, whatever, like highlights. But I don't the know. The care for that yeah. sort of stuff is more. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. interesting that's, to say that. About... sounds like sexism, but you know what I mean? Like, I feel like not probably true. in my head now, yeah, I feel like maybe like, I don't know, but, but in the UK in particular, I would say like, yeah, probably more male based audience because I can't think of, like you said, many women that would sit there and watch YouTube. I mean, it's a bit of a weird thing to do. Interesting it? you say about liking to share content, Darren, because you're the one person out of all my friends that never clicks on the links that I send you. I do, Whoa. I do do that. So then the other <laughs> day, the other day I, I say to him, I send him a lot of stuff and I know he's not going to look at it. I do and look at it. And then when we're traveling or we're on the road, he goes, what time's this? I'm like, just scroll three pages up. <laughs> But the other day I said, Darren, there's there's a blog here by Ryan Holiday, sick guy, good author, 35 things he learned before 35 years old. And I said to him, it's a 10 minute read, it's five years of therapy. And he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. Or he'll go, yeah, sick. Yeah, or, we'll do a busy. Laugh, or we'll do a laugh and emoji. <laughs> and then, laugh and emoji, a <laughs> really week, serious thing. A week later, he goes, Rob, lad, did you know Ryan Holiday is 35? Because it comes up in Rogan early on. I go, you fucking long cunt. <laughs> I said, Dylan, do you remember that fucking blog that I told you to read? Ten minutes later, he's like, rah, this is, he's like quoting from the blog. He's like, this is mad, this is mad. I'm like, I told I remember, you. I remember what I said. I was like, well, sorry, you didn't remind me again. <laughs> but yeah, but, fuck. Um, let's talk about your injury. Yes. It's so, injured. Torn Achilles. What, fully oh. fully ruptured, mate. Literally when? ripped it in half. Mm, okay, so I am, today I'm 14 weeks post-surgery. Bro, that's pretty good one of now. The worst you know. injuries, you know. Fuck. Literally, literally, pretty much number one <laughs> sporting injury. Yeah, yeah. Let's go back oh, to athletics God. for a beginning, and let's like set the scene for the. For really, the is this my? Is this my water? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's yeah, yeah. yeah. do. So, like, um, you're from an athletics background. Mm -hmm. I'm curious to know what we what was it you were competing in. What do you think? What like a guess? I would guess say like event. a sprint, like a sprint or. No, like you look runner. slow twitch. <laughs> no, <joking. Another> <laughs> Sprinter? Yeah, yeah, 1500. I was a, I was a long triple jumper, like long and triple jumper. Oh, okay, sick. But I used to be like a good 15, 20 kilos light. To be fair. So I, I don't mean to start any controversy, but I think the triple jump is fucking bollocks. <laughs> because no offense, they're like, Mate. this guy jumped 15 meters. I'm like, he fucking didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he took three jumps and then jumped. I'm yeah, like, so triple jump, yeah, like I, similar to YouTube, I started doing it and I was good at it and, I, and then. I basically, I think I fell into it. Like I was, I was always a footballer, and then I think I was in like year 10, 11, and it was like sports day, and there was someone that was ill or whatever, couldn't do triple jump, and I, I just did it, and I think I did like a school record, and I was like, oh, I'm sick. And then obviously, if you're good at something, you tend to like it, right? Because because you're good at it. Yeah. So I kind of fell into it from there, um, and and yeah, I did it for. I ended up doing it for like you know almost ten years, but like <laughs> numerous times, I was just like, what? But like. As if I'm devoting myself to the, like to the triple jump. What even is that like? And there's, athletics generally, athletics generally, like there's no money. It's an amazing sport. I learned so much here, but you are literally a peasant. Like I, I was doing it. I mean, I was never like world class, but it was points where I was like, you know, ranked third, fourth in the UK. Like in my in my event, I, I knew guys that were like, I know, like a a guy that won like medals at the world championships, he wasn't receiving a penny. Like he was getting, you know, his kit paid for and, and like transport and that, but he's having to work a full-time job. Like, that's that's mad, right? Yeah. There's just no, like, no one gives a fuck. There's just no money in the sport. It's, so like, it's a terrible, I mean, financially terrible sport to get into. I feel like the triple jump was made up. <laughs> so like yeah. some guy was like losing in the long jump. We had a bet like to his mate, one day I'll jump 10 meters. And his mate was like, all right, if you do, I'll give you like a million pound. And then he was <laughs> yeah. like, all right, well, actually, guys, I'm making up a new one. We're going to run, then jump. No, no, no. We're going to, what is it? What do you call it? The so three... it's like a hop, and then a step, then a jump. Hop, step, jump. Two jump. Bro, it is mad. It is mad. You think like, yeah, like how was that? How did that come about? Like what do you know what I mean? It is a mad thing to do. And it's also, I feel like picking a sport just to fuck you up. Like... If you watch triple jump slow mo from front yeah. on, they're like you know, your knee and your like your your hip and your ankle Lock. get absolutely, and also it's, it's unilateral. You're landing on the same leg, so like you get at your joints get absolutely pummeled. So yeah, not that, ideal. That's Gymna crazy. Gymnastics is crazy as well. I remember I was chatting to yeah. Niall, um, I think Wilson. You, yeah, 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 yeah. I was chatting to him about this stuff, and he was like, he was telling me he was like. Yeah, he was like shaking his head. Yeah, he was like the amount of work that you put in. Yeah, and if you go to the Olympics and stuff, you have to sign something saying like you have to be a sort of way Smith, like because you're, you have a big influence on kids and that, so you can't be talking a type of way like you and me would get cancelled in a day, bro. I had a uh, four hundred meter runner, Lavia Nielsen, on the pod, and uh, she went to the Tokyo uh, Olympics recently, and when they fly you out, everyone's in economy. All right, I see this some of the high level jiu jitsu guys I know. I go, you're fighting for a title in another country. 
I know you made 60 grand on your last merch drop and you're flying economy. It's mad. And they sit there going, have a Xanax, everything's business. I'm like, you're an athlete. You need to be looking after yourself. Yeah. Especially when you could win by two points or something. Yeah. Like, that's important. All of these GB athletes went out in economy for a start, which is fucked. Then when she gets to Tokyo, she was sat within nine seats of someone who had COVID. So she gets put into quarantine for two weeks before the Olympics on her own. And she didn't have COVID. In Japan, they tested her, I think, once or twice every day, negative in all of them. Couldn't let her out. She, The whole buzz, the Olympic village, everything that makes the Olympics special she's been working for for four weeks is taken away. I flew, uh, when I flew to Austin, someone, when the, the air hostesses was like, you need to put your mask on. I was like, I'm in business class. I'm socially distanced. There is no one within six oh, feet yeah. of me. Like, where oh, are no, these considerations crazy. for oh, athletes? No, like, you're representing our country. At least they flat. Give them premium economy or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Um, but there's just no money. Like, you know, and like the the viewership, even like watching it now, like they've had to, they remove, so they have like the Diamond League, which is like the main kind of Grand Prix, like the, the main events, you know, like outside of the, the championships. And they've, 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 they've had to remove events because it's just to try and make it more engaging. Do you know what I mean? So some of the events are like, oh, you're a, you're a 800 meter runner. See you later. Like you're not, you're not competing anymore because they just cut the events because they're trying to make it like short and you know like 20, you know, the equivalent of like 20 20 cricket. You know, making it like short form, more engaging. They've just sacked off events. Do you know it's what? Just, yeah, is amazing that I didn't know existed till I had that chat. Um, was there's the mixed relay, so you get the 400 meters. Yeah. And you have two women, two men. Do you know about this? That's no. a new. This is a fairly new addition. Yeah. So you have a team of four. So your tactics are: do you send the men off first, the women off first? Do you want yeah. the women to start from stop, or do you want them to catch? And some teams might save their strongest male runner till last, so the other runners don't run as hard because they're in the lead, rather than yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But when we were talking about, you know, trans in sports and all of these things, she was like, watch the mixed relay. I am watching a man by woman running next to each other yeah. to win a comp. And it is day and night. It's actually frightening because when you watch women on their own, they're moving quick. Yeah. But then when you see a man running next Compar to them, yeah. Well, athletics, not 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 all, maybe that pole, but the majority of the events. That that's what I learned in athletics, right? Is that it's like the pinnacle of like genetic elite. So basically, you are, you know, any world class athlete was born to be that. You know, you don't you don't become a, like you are. That's it. Like if you're if you're an Olympic sprinter, you are a genetic freak. Like you've 100%. got to, you've got to train to realize that, but. That is an underlying thing. You don't you don't get the average guy that becomes a sprinter that doesn't happen. Like you're you're talking like one in you know one in fucking ten million. Like it's extremely extremely. You have to have good genetics, bro. Yeah, so I, tra I trained for like ten years as a dribble jumper. Like work my nuts off. Like learn new you know did everything I, that I should be doing. And then you get like a seventeen year old in some American college comes out and jumps further than me in yeah. their first ever competition. And you got your genes like you got good genetics as well. Yeah, it's just it's just like I said. You yeah, it's, it's the guys when you're at school twelve that has a beard that is like an absolute monster. That's the kind of level. It's just completely one in a million people the important thing here is as well as if you even rewind a little bit you found your sport because it was an athletic state at school you did it and everyone's like you're fucking good at this so a uh, video i'd go viral recently was people might want to start swimming to look like a swimmer but they won't get the swimmer's body yeah people that end up uh swimming don't look like it because they're swimming they swim because the way they look and for me People are like, oh, you got big and broad because you played rugby. I was like, no, 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 I played rugby because I'm big yeah, and broad. Yeah. So, you know, what, this is so important for schools around the country to have these sibs where get every kid to do every sport. And first time I played rugby, I fucking hated it. And I yeah. remember like going out, I was like, not doing this. And then I bumped a kid for the first time. And my teacher was like, after school training, you're training with the year above. And I got hooked. But we need people to find these sports. Like in China, they're a little bit like, you're a gymnast. You're this. Yeah, yeah. But for everyone, we should be trying to find their but, potential. That's why I can't wait to have kids. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. I'm playing football. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> and you know what? That's a big consideration. Yeah. So like my, I've got two boys, right? And like I, like I'm a, so I'm a massive Arsenal fan. So I watch, I watch football because of Arsenal. But I'm a, like, I wouldn't watch another game. I watch Arsenal games, but I yeah. love Arsenal and football in that sense. Right. But like the, the people involved in football absolute scumbags like I watch wow. there, there are games like so over the road for me there's like a big like field they have like they play football over there and on the weekend you can bear in mind this is like the lowest level football even down to like you know under 10s you can hear the parents like Mate, swearing like shouting aggressively at the referee it's like nine year olds playing football like well, that blows my mind and even so I used to be a teacher right Kids on the playground would like dive, like you see kids diving, like playing football. They're diving, they're pretending to be injured. Like, yeah, it's an it's the most horrible environment. And even I had kids that were like amazing kids, really nice, super hardworking, 
they play football and they become absolute bellends because it's that culture, there's that football culture. So like I'm torn because on the one hand, I don't want my sons to be anywhere near that, but if you stop them playing football, they're going to be weird, aren't they? Because yeah. you don't want to be the kid that doesn't, do you know what I mean? I yeah. played till I was like 25. Yeah. I played in Australia, I played in Turkey, I played like non-league here. Wasn't good enough to make it, but played like a decent level. And I think I was too nice in the changing room. You have to be a bit of a prick, I think, yeah. to be like really. I think in it that you have to be a bit narcissistic and you have to have an ego to kind of out. The worst bit is when coaches see that they're like, it's a confident guy, put yeah. it on. Yeah. And it's almost, yeah. if well, you're you too look, nice, you it's look not at the good. top, look at most top, especially English footballers are absolute dicks. You you have to, like, yeah, yeah, you have to be a bit like that. You do. And yeah. I bet it's hard when you've got kids, you're like, you don't want them to be like that. Yeah. But if you can find the right balance, it yeah. can be. But, but that's, that's what I mean, going back to athletics, like, Athletics is an amazing sport with really cool people, did mad stuff. But if I if I if I encourage my son to be an athlete, I'm kind of mugging him off because he's going to end up having a career scraping a living. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not really. Whereas yeah. to be a footballer, you're a fucking multi-millionaire, but you're surrounded by absolute Mate, scumbags. You can play a conference and still make fifteen hundred quid a week. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like <laughs> athletics. If I'd been at my level as a footballer, I'd be making a lot of money. I was making nothing. I was working yeah, yeah. shitty jobs trying to get enough money to go and you know, fly to a competition or whatever. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, mad, yeah. the discrepancy. There's a bias called the survivorship bias. And pretty much uh, in World War II, there were planes coming back from war and they had bullet holes in them. So then one guy was like, oh, I need you to put armor on the planes. And he's like, where? He's like, oh, where the bullet holes are. So, you know, they won't get shot there again. And one guy was like, nah, we don't need to armor these bits. They've been shot because these planes came back. We need to armor the places there are no bullet holes because those planes didn't. And everyone was looking in the wrong place. And the same with football. You could reel off so many footballers getting tens of millions a year, but then you never see the planes that didn't come back. You don't see the tens of thousands of disappointed footballers. Yeah, yeah. The guy who was a month away from getting a contract and blew his ACL. It's brutal, it's brutal as well. Like, yeah, you, yeah. One thing, I love, I love rugby, right? So I'm not shitting on football, but it's really difficult to prove yourself. So let's say you get given 15 minutes in football, you go on left back, whatever. If no one passes you the ball or passes yeah. you the ball well or sets you up or gives a through ball, it's out of your control. A goalkeeper, you could be a player of a good team. You don't touch the ball for like the no, entire yeah. game. Like, But in, in rugby, you can get on there and be like, right, push yeah. the fly off out of the way, give me the fucking ball. Yeah. And you can just charge at someone as hard as you want. And even if you get your head taken off, you're like, right, I better do that again. That's why I love the sport as well because when things get G'd up, everyone has the potential to do what they want whenever they want. In football, Someone gives a bad pass, it goes off. I don't understand the sport well enough. Yeah, but yeah. I can imagine how frustrating it is in football to prove your worth. In rugby, you just put in a hit so big, you don't care if you get knocked out. I always get shit because I always banter about how football, you need way more skill. I'm like, if rugby, if you're an athlete, if you're quick, if you're strong. It's true. Look at, Lima. Look at Lima. You can be you can be a professional rugby player. Yeah. Like, no, I, no, I offense, think, yeah. no offense to Paul Lima, right? When you see him in jiu-jitsu, you can tell he is a guy that relies on his strength and his <laughs> natural power. Yeah. He's a powerful man. And in rugby, they give him the ball and he just sprints. He's, yeah. Bup, bup. And it's so crazy that not taking anything away from him, if you were to give a large percentage of the population his physical abilities, they would have played just as well as him. Yeah, but he was like that at football as well. He would have been the big black guy as the target man. That's, what it, that, that's like, yeah, yeah. as a centre-back, that's my worst nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Having him there, do you know what I mean? So we got yeah. the triple jump. Uh, then you say you're a PE teacher. So let's go through yeah. a brief history. So I did triple jump for, like I said, close to 10 years. Uh, kind of fell into working in schools. I was, like, doing athletics. I started coaching athletics. Then started coaching kids in schools. Then kind of became, like, a, essentially a teaching assistant in a school. Then went on to be a teacher. So I kind of slowly just... If you don't mind me asking, how much, how much do you get paid to be a teacher? I went in on like... 21? Yeah, like I forget, low 20s. 21, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then like, I was teaching for like four years and I was just like, I was a sick teacher. You know? I got like, the, the, the teaching, I forget what it's even called now, the teaching qualification that I did, you get like assessed. And I got like, the, you know, the, the highest, like whatever the grade could be. But like after four years, yeah, I was making... I can see the kids are really liking you as well and like actually four. listen to you. What well, like... Uh, obviously, I was a PE teacher, which is like, I feel like it makes it easier. Like, in, in the sense that I worked in a school where th there was, like, huge behaviour issues. It was in a very, like, rough catchment area. So lots of the kids had horrible home lives, horrible parents, like, all kinds of, like, yeah, horrible, like, backstories. Um, but not always, a lot of the time, the, the naughty kids that, like, you know, big behaviour issues tend to like sport or at least like the ability, the option, the... the the, the ability to go and move around and do stuff like 
teaching those kids science, fuck that. Like, if you've got 10 kids that are, you know, not nice kids, behavioural issues, and they don't want to be there, like, that is... Yeah, yeah. I scare kids out of class all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't, like, my energy, I needed to, like, an outburst. Yeah. And I, I yeah. couldn't get that I in feel class. so bad. For, like, I had mates that were teaching, like, humanities and whatever. Like, <laughs> I, I feel so <laughs> bad for those guys. Because in that kind of... If you're in a, you know, a grammar school or, like, a, a nice school sick form, whatever, that's different. Then you can you have a chance to get across your your knowledge and, like, kids are really appreciative. In that school, like, it, yeah, that's jo horrible. Josh's jo crazy, right? So let's say you're going on 21. Within the space of a few years, you're then in a position to make your year's salary in, like, six weeks. And now... I, I said this, we have uh, IFS, which we're trying to get you to come to next year, come along. But there's business talks. And I say to them, like, look, it's £300 come along for the weekend. Me and everyone have learned from everything you need to know about running a business. Even just chatting to you today for a few minutes, I was like, how much could reposting your videos be worth? Yeah, yeah. More than £300. So when I say to these people yeah, to come, yeah. and some of the people that aren't coming spent £15,000 at university learning a business degree from someone who's never had a business or made a lot of money oh, no, it's crazy. and if they had they wouldn't be fucking teaching at university you know that, that exact thing so like we uh, we had like uh we still have one but we had like a financial advisor right a few years ago like he's a really nice guy um but when we when, when things started going a bit mad like we were making like you know a, a lot of money uh, we kind of almost outgrew and we went just like to, to someone else with another like another company another setup but this guy like he was a really nice guy but like it was apparent you know, he wasn't making loads of money. And then I was like, hang on a minute, like... How are you going to control my money? If yeah. you're a good financial advisor, like, the guy's in his 50s, surely by this point, if you know how to invest money, why have you not made... Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Hang on a minute, like, how have you not made more money? Like, not... it's different, so football manager, right? You can be a, you can be a terrible footballer, still be a great manager, that could yes. be a thing, right? Yeah. This is different. If you're literally, you know, it, it, it educating me on how to invest in a better way... How have you not done it yourself? Do you know what I mean? You obviously can't be that good because you'd made more money. It's like, you know it's I mean? like life coaches that don't even know how to manage their own life. Like, yeah, don't tell yeah. Me well, what like to someone, do. someone like being like, oh, how to grow your following? They got a shit following. Like, if you're <laughs> yes. good at growing yes. your following, what are you? Kills where's me. your following, mate? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Seven, Hang on a minute. Seven ways to build your following, bro. Have you got five thousand followers? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Instagram's been here for years. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I, I have this point, and also those teachers at your school. If you're a sick history teacher. Why not go home and put gnarly videos of things that happen in history on TikTok and YouTube? Because in a year, a year of going full time on any social media platform, yeah. you can make more money than being paid by the state as a doctor. Do a video like that. That one you said, the one with Mark Person, that that um, US Military, Army SEALs yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. That video made just the video alone. The ad revenue was like over forty grand. So like I made. Oh, that's so, amazing. So like we, we filmed that in like an hour and a half down a local track of a like another guy. Louis filmed it for us. Like. That made more than I would have earned in like a year and a half, or almost two years as a teacher. Hey, careful, he's going to message us for 20K. <laughs> yeah, they, they, know, they, they know, mate. I've made them fully aware of that. But isn't it crazy that there's still the narrative is do well at school, go to college, go to university. Yeah. How much is it a uni at the moment? Nine grand? Nine That's grand tough. a year? Yeah. you got to do three or four of those fucking yeah. things. You're putting yourself in debt to, no offence, you actually know, fuck you universities. I went, it was a pile of shit. Yeah, I did. Dropped out my first year. So you're paying nine grand a year to learn from people especially in the business realm obviously if you're a doctor or anything like that still go to you we need you yeah <laughs> but like and all these business people like even Harvard Business School like I'm really what credentials do these people have someone's yeah. probably going to message me and go actually Peter Thiel does that <laughs> but it, it just blows my mind that people it's, it's the mindset that separates yeah. the people it's um, the easy option is to I think it sounds yeah. bad the easy option is to go study I think taking action is the hard thing and to take action you need a mindset where you don't fit I've got two GCSEs I'm I'm so shit at everything else. But if you tell me to go make money somewhere and hustle, I know I can do yeah, that. Yeah, I think I, I think a lot of it as well is just that's what everyone's always done, right? Like people, your your dad went to uni, so then you go. That's just a it's just a residual thing. You just keep doing it. You do it. It's a lot of like society just does stuff because they think they should do it's that. The right I mean, thing. Yeah, to it's do. just what you you don't. It's just what that's just what you do. You go to you go to school. You go to uni. That's it, right? Like you said there, absolutely agree. Like if, in a lot of cases, university is. I think it's a sick experience, but in terms of is it really justified for the amount of money that's going to set you back? Probably not. And in those three years, could you have got yourself in a better position, you know, financially and in a better role in a job, whatever? Probably. But, like, I think the exception would be, like, you know, there are some things that are more vocational where, like, you literally have to have done that degree or whatever to then go into that job. So that would make more sense. But for most things, if you're doing a degree, and like, my brother did philosophy. He finished and was like, what the fuck am I... What am I unless I'm going to be, like, a philosopher, like, what am I even doing with this? Do you know what I mean? You, yeah, he had a great time, but, like, what are you actually going to do with that? If you think about it as well, though, say, like, 
20, 30 years ago, someone going to university and they're studying something. They're giving 150% into studying it. You go to university now, social media, time on your phone, parties, what's viral, what's this? They're not actually focusing on that. There's too many distractions to actually like fully be good at that I think it's craft. more the experience now. I think now university is pissed. more about... Yeah, it's more about the reason I'd say to someone to do it is because it's a good experience. It's like life experience. You grow up, you do live by yourself, whatever. You make like friends and stuff. In terms of what you're actually going to come out of it, in you know, in a physical like qualification sense, very hard to justify. Yeah. Thirty years ago, you had to go to uni to learn. Now you don't. Yeah, there is everything everywhere. Like, That's everything true. is everywhere. And the fact that you're going to move across the country to go to Nottingham Trent Uni to fucking live in a shitty halls that you're going to get overpriced for, yeah. and they're going to charge you at the end of the year for using the fire extinguishers when you came in drunk. I didn't go to Nottingham Train, I went to Hartbury. <laughs> it's just fucking bonkers to me. I, I find the whole thing is absolutely crazy. And the, the other thing is, I'm mortified that teachers get paid so little and people are like, oh, you got six week. It's hard work. And they're working with, with the fucking future of our country and they're getting shit all paid. So anyone with a modicum of fucking now intellect fucking any of these things is going to fuck off the second they make more money. Yeah. Like teaching now, like, is a, it's... Like the government have just fucking ruined it. Like it's you've got people that have never taught before that are setting like you know benchmarks and regulations on what teaching should look like. Like it that it's it's an absolute joke. But like I I had like I had a mate who yeah again teaching humanities. He'd come into school at like seven a.m. He'd be marking books for like an hour. <laughs> He'd, he'd teach till like five. He'd go home, be marking books till 10, go to bed and do that every day. He'd be coming in in the school holidays. Like he, the guy's getting paid like 25 grand and he's yeah. working like whatever that is, 70 hours a week, something ridiculous. Yeah. Like, and, and being told that he's got to do more. Like, oh, you know, you're marking your books, but now you need to, when you, instead, instead of like, you know, uh, ticking and giving a thing, you've got to, rather, rather than giving a comment at the end of your assignment, you've got to give like comments every paragraph. Like he's spending like half an hour per book. Like it's just the standard is constantly. Being, you know, I think the assumption is like, oh, people can just continually give more. Oh, that isn't enough. Next year, we're gonna, we're gonna do, we're gonna start doing this, and we're gonna start using different color pens to do like blah blah blah. And it's like, human, you know, you aren't robots. You can't just yeah. keep. There's a point where it's like, this is not sustainable. So teachers just either have a breakdown or just like leave yeah, and go my, and do my something else. My sister taught for ten years. She was like, oh, okay. yeah. She's like, yeah. like dealing with parents alone was like, yeah. like, yeah. and I can't imagine what it'd be like in a private school. Like, especially if you're paying your, yeah. like, kids to be there, I bet yeah. there, there must be way more, like... You get what... I think it goes one or two ways. One way is that, yeah, where the expectations would be really high. The other way is, like, the parents don't give a shit. They've just palmed the kids off so they don't... You have no contact. But definitely the first instance would be a case, yeah, yeah. But regarding that, like, how... What happened to your Achilles? I need to interject just before we get to that. If you were still a teacher right now, we would do our best to get you to not be a teacher anymore because you have value. You have something you can give. It, it baffles my mind that people don't see this big picture. If you pay people shit, they will not stay. They will yeah. not remain invested. And unfortunately for me, I think we have another fucking pandemic that no good people are going to remain invested. Some will, maybe older generations, but as you look forward, no good people will remain there. I had uh, Dr. Curran on, uh, he's got 5 million on TikTok, 600,000 on YouTube. And he's an NHS surgeon. He does like, fuck it. He removes people's colons all day, every day, bowel surgery, everything. And he gets charged to park his car at the hospital. Yeah. So he has oh, to pay yeah. parking at the hospital. After I think four or five years of studying, he goes in on 30K and he's got 5 million followers. He got offered more than his NHS salary to promote a probiotic. So he could give up being a surgeon to yeah. promote a probiotic on socials. And it is so crazy this world we live in where People are getting paid such shit money to do stuff. Do you think, though, if we influence too many people to be like that, it's not going to be good for the world? Well, this is the important <laughs> thing. So he then did a video on getting women, teaching them how to check their breasts for uh, lumps, like yeah, different not. places. So he goes, my content can stop people from ever needing surgery. Mm. Unagi. But I was like, it, it's just kind of fucked. It's yeah. really frustrating. And when I do hear about, like, salaries of teachers and stuff. Well, I think the biggest thing as well is, like, there's, whereas if you're working, you know, like in a private organization, if you're shit, you just get sacked, right? You get pushed out. And if you're great, you get, you earn more money. Yes. In teaching and like, you know, nursing, whatever, that doesn't, it's not really the case. So there are teachers, when I was working, you get one teacher that's like that guy that's like an amazing teacher, literally killing himself for that job. Another teacher doesn't give a fuck, doing the bare minimum, terrible teacher, you know, arguing with kids every day. They're paying, they're getting paid the same salary. Like there's no, 
there's no real reward. You know what I mean? You, you work for like a year and they're like, oh, I have a two hundred pound a year like increase in salary. Like it's yeah. It, so you're again, teachers are like what a lot of them. And let, I think you get people that are just stuck in a rut kind of thing. But anyone that has anything about them is going to be like, hang on a minute, what what am I, I doing here? Like the, what sells? I think the most about teaching, and I could be wrong here, is the holidays. Yeah, yeah. I, again, for, so for me, absolutely, yeah. But for this guy, no, <laughs> yeah, no, do you know what I mean? It yeah, wasn't, yeah. yeah his holidays wouldn't, didn't really exist. Like, yeah. So like, it, yeah. I, Humanities, that brought back some memories. Yeah. Like, well, I fucking I don't know that Humanities. <laughs> it's just like geography and all, you know, like RE and all that stuff. I hated it. They school. were separate <laughs> subjects to me. Me too. And like, I'm, I'm going to do an ADHD test soon because they're, someone close to me was like, oh, it will help you understand your superpowers and appreciate what you're not good at. But, yeah, school to me was a, a bit of a waste of time, to be honest. I didn't really enjoy it, but I'm kind of grateful for it. But at the same time, like, fuck, I had to drive past my primary school yesterday. I looked in and I was like, oh, I did nothing there. Yeah. I'm the first kid in history to be given music in class. Um, <laughs> so the Achilles. Yeah, mate, ripped you in half. Um, yeah, so you I... You should try training a bit more, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do yeah. some that, resistance that, that was probably that's, the problem. Yeah. No, do you know what? I think I, I, so in a minute, I'll talk about this, but I think I identified a couple of potential, like reasons but so i um like i've been you know what, i've been unbelievably lucky like considering i did triple jump for like 10 years which is like if you if you want to get injured uh, and you're trying to find a sport to get injured triple jump's got to be up there right like i i had like chronic back issues ongoing things but I, I'd, I'd never had a major acute you know like a big rupture big like big hamstring tear big acl where i'd never had anything like that ever no, no never a big like you know instantaneous injury and then so yeah, I'm like 36, haven't played football for like 15 years. And a mate was like, oh, do you want to come and play five aside like once a week? This is like the most common, this is like a this cliche is, as well, you know. This is so common. So I started playing five aside once a week and like it was sick, like great. Like I've always neglected cardio. I've got a fast metabolism. So for me, if I do cardio, I've just got to eat more food, right? Which is sounds like a great sign, but it's not ideal for gaining weight. So I wanted to start, I was acutely aware that training, you know, predominantly as a powerlifter, having long recoveries, doing like, be in a gym for an hour and a half and do like six reps in that time, like, and then no cardio and eating loads of food, not great for like general health and like, you know, life expectancy. So I started doing cardio. This I was playing football like once a week. It was great, really enjoying it. I think it was like week five or six. Um, the first couple I was like gassed, like I was, I was like within five minutes, literally breathing, like struggling. Slowly got fitter, like was feeling really good, was getting better because I was like, obviously my fitness was kind of inhibiting me. I was getting good, like, and then I think it was week five or six. We were like, the, the sessions were like an hour um, and it was literally, yes, the worst thing as well, yeah. It was, we were done. It was like the clock was done. Oh. People were like walking out. We were done, right? And I was like, it was the most innocuous thing. I wasn't sprinting or lunging. Nothing happened. I remember just like, I think maybe I just jogged and the ball was there and I, I kind of just turned a little bit, not even a sharp turn. Pop. And just heard like the, like a proper like it's pop. like a gunshot. Yeah, and... Like a meet, like immediately, I was like, "Well, I ruptured my Achilles because what else could that that noise in that area? What else oh, is that going to be, right?" That scares me. Bro. And then I was like, "Well, hang on a minute, maybe like it was the noise of like a kick." So I was like looking around. I was like, "Please, please tell me someone just kicked me. No, like, there's no one anywhere near me." Um, yeah, and so yeah, so basically, uh, the mad that, thing is your fitness probably you not say your cardio not being great at the beginning probably saved that happening because as you get fitter sometimes if you're doing a lot of power lifting your yeah. like your muscles are not conditioned it's just completely different it's, completely it's two different things firstly it's that capacity like i don't have that work capacity so yeah you can be strong and resilient but when you're fatigued everything's different like right? your joints having to uh, become so compromised when you're because muscles aren't working stabilizers aren't working in the same way right but then also it's just like I don't know. That, do you know what? This is the hardest thing for me. I would much rather it had been like someone had fucking ploughed into me or I'd like yeah, yeah. had a car crash, falling off or yeah. fall downstairs because then I can justify it and I can be like, oh, I can avoid that next time. For this, there was zero warning signs. My Achilles, I had no soreness. I've never had any Achilles problems in my life. Like, yeah. I squat like a lot of weight, yeah. deadlift a lot of weight. How can... I, and I'm just jogging around and out of nowhere just literally but I think that's also the problem because you're almost too efficient. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like the way you lift, the way you would lift, like what, you, what do you lift? Like six, eight reps max, probably. Like when you yeah, got, right? mate, mainly and like you're, his you're singles he's done and triples. Thousands of repetitions through the same movement patterns. Yeah, that's and the it's thing. Yeah. Every, every it's movement one, is. But it's all on one plane. It's, exactly. I don't deviate. And then as soon as you start chucking in, like twisting and like, yeah, like, yeah, accelerating, yeah. decelerating, like those kind of things. My, and then 
you you have that new stimulus and then your body is fatigued as fuck. Yeah. That's a recipe. Did you yeah. lift the morning or the day before? No, no I, I, you know, training like most days, but I hadn't done anything. I, again, mate, there was nothing. No one on Astro Turf? No, it was in it was indoors in like a you know, like oh, a sports hall, hard service. Yeah, I, I think so. Do you know what? Yeah, so a few things. I, I'd started doing that again after not playing competitive football for like fifteen years. Yeah, right. I've been I've been slowly doing cardio. So for the first time, I was like doing little runs. You know, every few days. I think uh, I, that was over the course of two, three months. I just think that accumulation of stuff, and then I think. Like I, I've, I've, I've asked my physio so many times, like because I wish I had a video of it. I want to be able to analyze, like zoom in and see yeah. what the fuck happened. Do you know what I mean? He says you, know, you could just get that freak, like everything aligns. Yeah. You're fatigued. You plant it in one way, you twist it, and everything just aligns. But you got to just... think as well, like mentally as well. You're probably there. I bet you were the fittest looking guy there. Appearance was yeah, yeah. yeah. But in terms of fitness, yeah, yeah far from the world. That sort, of, I think that sort of pressure kind of gets you mentally. You, you look good, you feel good. They probably know what the fuck you do. Yeah, yeah. You kind of like. You're like, I'm there to kind of not put on a show, yeah. but like. I mean, there are guys there that, you know, there were like 40 year old, slightly fat guys that were way fitter than me. Like, yeah, it was I know. humbling as fuck. Like, yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. It's how much do you weigh? Like 95 kilos now. It's a lot of weight to be trotting about, especially with 15 years off and then doing that. Yeah. And then, you remember um, I had one of our mates, Graham, really smart SNC guy. I said to him, I'm going back to playing sevens. Can you write me a program? And the program had some like jump in, trap bar, deadlift, stuff like that was sick. But when I was doing a rear for elevated split squat, he got me to put the balls of my feet on a plate. So there was some uh, plantar fascial and like heel tendon stabilization stuff. So the, the mid part of my foot, I actually had, my, my fucking feet were fatiguing. My plantar fascia yeah. were getting sore. And I was like, this is perfect because you run on the balls of your feet when you're playing football. Yeah. Yeah. You're not really heel striking when you change positions. And I was like, fuck, I played rugby for 15 years, never conditioning these parts of my feet. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's mad. I'm When I played rugby when I was younger, it was just squat, bench, dead, deadlift, bicep curl, and, and play. There was nothing really dynamic. And now that we do jiu-jitsu, although my body probably looks a lot worse, I've never been so strong through so many ranges. My yeah, core yeah. has never been so efficient. And I did a, a deadlift seminar the other day, and I can do 200 kg without straps. And people are like, do you train? I was like, I actually, I just play with humans all the time. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I have that strength because I know I'm not going to get injured because I wrestle with men six times a week. Yeah. It, it's... It's such a weird thing because, and when bodybuilders come, they fatigue so quick because they're not used to the ranges that we work. That's in, why being I had run. It's different, isn't it? It's just completely yeah. different. Even like you're just looking at football specifically, like you can be a fit guy that can run all day, but playing football is different. It's Bruh. just it, it, all that. It's just such a niche thing. There's no other way to start, replicate. Yeah, there's no other, other than, way, than doing games. Other right? than doing the games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And like but, basketball with twisted ankles, because the proximity of players is so much closer together and a lot more upright. Yeah. Then suddenly the likeness of someone just knocking your knee in. Well, it's squash, squash. So in terms of Achilles rupture, squash is by far and away number one like incidence of Achilles because it's that combination of planting, twisting and pushing off. That's when your Achilles... Look at loads of footballers, that have, like Dave Beckham, when he did his Achilles, it's yeah. nothing happened. You watch it, it's like he it puts his ankle down, turns, and you just see, his, you just see it like go. Like, My plant of fascia happened a like common that as well one. in Australia. I tore my plant of fascia like that. It, was like, it, was, it felt like a gunshot as yeah. well. It was, just like, it was loud. You can literally yeah, yeah. hear it like, yeah. yeah. And you just but that's, know. again, yeah. It happens in the NBA a lot as well. This is really random, but you should watch Hustle on Netflix. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, I, I saw a, a guy getting Kimura and he doesn't tap at comp and he snaps his humerus. Oh, my God. I actually think I'd rather a broken humerus than dislocated shoulder. Because the Just bone will heal quicker. Yeah. And like, yeah. you know, if you had like a spiral fracture in your tip fib from turning too quick, in some respects, the bone being fused together is yeah. a little bit easier than... It's than, less yeah. complicated. Like your Achilles is the is the thickest tendon in your body and it's the biggest force producer. Like, and it's also, I didn't know, but it's like the fibers are like a rope. They fucking mm. like, they do this, they, they twist. So it's not even like you rupture and they repair it. It's never going to be the same because... Those fibers, it's not like it's this. They're like all twisted, so you're never going to get the ends. It's you know years I mean? of condition that has also built that. Are, yeah. Did you get it reattached? Yeah, yeah. So I had, so what I do is they, it's pretty mad how they do it now. I've, got, I've actually got a video of them doing it. It's pretty fucking sick. Like the guy literally slicing my leg and pulling my tendon out. Like it's, like it's mad. No way. Yeah, yeah. First so time I watched that, I was, I put some bits, I put like a couple of clips on, but it's gory as fuck. It's literally yeah, my, I don't, I don't someone that. with some tweezers I'll pulling, actually, like, pulling cool. my Achilles tendon out, like how in my leg. How thick was it? Didn't look that short. Well, I mean, so this Achilles now is like fucking massive. The other one, I think maybe it's like a centimeter, smaller than you think. But like that, that ten, like that's the other thing that blows my mind is that the 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 the, the fucking density and thickness of that Achilles and how much shit it's gone through in my life, and then it can just 
Go. Not even just partially tear, fully rip in half with seemingly no, pre, you know, like it wasn't like I had tendonitis, no yeah. underlying things. Like you're scaring me now. I ain't training. That's though. what I mean. Like that's what I've like. Yeah. I, I'm so now I can I can play football with my son, but like. I'll probably never now play like competitive football again because that, I, I'll be terrified. Yeah, I you think I mean? you should, you know, but like slowly condition yourself with the right, with the right. Because I think no matter how much you lift, right, however good you look and blah blah, there's something really mentally like that fucks me up when I oh, and I'm not able to run or I don't feel fit. Yeah, no, no, mate. I'm always yeah. I want like so my goal now like I've got a few things in the pipeline in terms of stuff I need to do, but like I want to. Like I, I'm lifting will always be at the forefront because I just like, I enjoy being enjoy strong. Lifting, yeah, like yeah. not like bodybuilding. I think is boring as fuck. But like powerlifting, like lifting okay. heavy, I find that extremely fun. So like yeah, I always yeah. want to do that. Right? I love being strong. But then beyond that, I want to be like I like I still like sprinting. Like I did that for like ten years. Like it's fun. Yeah, and like yeah. I mean, I'm realistic, but it's just a fun, like. Maybe one day you might need to be able to run. Do you know what I mean? Like, come come to the dark side. Apocalypse. Come to jiu-jitsu. I see you squatting 188 weeks after, or was what was it? Yeah, so I didn't. So I, I didn't post some of my videos. I I held them back because I knew you get like every time I post a video, me lifted. Everyone's like, "Fuck, you shouldn't be doing that." Like, I need that's, my physio. That's my not happy. Max, he's doing it eight weeks after fucking rupturing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So squatting's the hardest. Dead mate, deadlifting. Like, I deadlifted. So, yeah, I deadlifted like 230 kilograms, I think eight weeks, eight and a half weeks after fully fucking rupturing my Achilles. I think most physios would say that's good. You yeah. should be doing that, no? So they do. So he, he my physios have like, he, firstly, he's like a fucking, he's Mr. Achilles. He's done like NBA players, Premier League footballers. Yeah, like, yeah. I literally found this guy. He's like, all he does is Achilles repairs. He's, he's aggressive in terms of like, I was mm-hmm. walking really early on. And like, yeah. I think the mistake, if, if you did your Achilles on the NHS, like, uh, it's pretty scary what they get you to do. It's fucking shit. Like, it is shit, You yeah. basically do nothing. So, like, what happens is you, your Achilles, is, when, when you're in the boot or the cast, your Achilles is healing, right? But if you do nothing, your Achilles is going to heal frail as fuck. It's going to be thin and pathetic, and the chance of re-rupture is so high, right? Whereas if you're doing stuff, so I was walking and load-bearing really early, so the Achilles heals, but it's getting that stimulus, do you know what I mean? And my Achilles now is <laughs> it's fucking thick as fuck it's like yeah you, you can see my it physio, it's literally my physio is like that as well the minute i tore uh, when i tore my plantar fascia i was on the leg press the next day rebuilding all those muscles yeah. that helped stabilize yeah. everything. i'm in the same like um <clears throat> unless you get like a compound fracture in your arm i remember i broke both my arms when i was a kid and they just put it in a cast and it comes out weak as fuck and it stinks yeah. when you get the ruler down it scratch it. yeah and the atrophy like just literally what because it's because you just immobilize like I was watching my calf literally dissolve in front of my heart. It was the most depressed. I'm like, oh. four weeks, can't contract. And in fact, more than that, I had like six weeks where I couldn't contract my calf in a meaningful way. And you, you would not believe the rate at which it just literally just atrophies. It's you know, it's depressing. been a, three times this podcast, you nearly said the word depressed and held it back because you don't think it's probably applicable because people do suffer with depression. But I'm going to say, no, you absolutely can say it depresses you yeah, because... Yeah. People are almost tiptoe around this and they they look at you and they go, but you make 15 grand a month on YouTube and you can't be depressed. You fucking can because this is so important to you. You wouldn't have done this training and been lifting these weights and looked this way unless this was something really important to your identity for so long. And for that to be taken away does depress people. Yeah, particularly for me, like, so obviously I train up body, right? But like I do it because like just... From like a, I'm not a vanity standpoint. It's good for like, yeah, it's more. Make, you can make more money. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just good for brands, right? It's just good for what I do. Like ultimately, even though it's you know it's a sad state of affairs, the better you look, the more monetizable that is, right? Like it, it obviously you have that underlying knowledge and understanding and whatever. But if you could just chuck in looking sick, you're, that's what, what a time to be alive, right? So that's my main motivation for that, right? But in terms of my training, the only thing I really enjoy is squatting and deadlifting and benching heavy. And like immediately, like the guys, like it, when I first saw the the um, the surgeon, he was like, I'm "Gonna be honest here, like it may be, you may be looking at a year before you can deadlift and squat properly." Oh. I was like, "Fuck!" Like, do you know what I mean? Like, like, but so so it happened. I did the rupture. Yeah, the maddest thing was didn't hurt at all. Like I had a, an hour that evening where it was like throbbing, and then it was just nothing. Didn't hurt at all. And like I kind of I was pinching it. I was like, I think I can feel an Achilles there. So I was like, maybe it's like a calf tear. Maybe I've got away with it. You know. Next day, I went and got it scanned, and it's like the guy was like, "That black gap, that's just that's full rupture. Your Achilles isn't there anymore. Yeah, it's gone." Um, it's fun. Take it, you got private health. Yeah, yeah. I just uh, the guy that did Eddie Hall's bicep. I went to his clinic the next day. Um, he scanned it and was like, "Yeah, he was like, look, uh, sorry, but you, that's fucking full rupture. Your Achilles is not there anymore." Um, 
then the surgeon came in, put me in a cast, and I had the surgery like four or five days later. Um, Cause you got to do it. You got to move quick, right? Yeah. What you don't want with a, any tendon rupture, if you leave it, it separates. Or it can separate. And Fair if you if it comes away, then you're the, the, they've got to make a massive incision to try and get it back. It makes it much mm. more complicated. Um, what's blew my mind is that you can just go non-surgical. So like, they put me in a boot after surgery so that your foot because we don't want to, you don't want to dorsiflex. You want to you want to if you sh we, you don't want to stretch the tendon like while it's healing you want it to heal even now it's tight as fuck that's a good thing you want it to be tight as fuck because you can slowly elongate it over time if you stretch it too early it doesn't go back you yeah, never get function yeah so, so you get footballers they get rushed back to play football and they never regain full you know they're never as fast or as powerful because they're t one tendon is longer than the other so you got to be really uh, careful there which is why squatting's harder because obviously you've got a dorsal flex to squat right um, so did I they tell you to like plant or did they say just like neutral, don't do nothing until... And I say you're in, in the boot. I've got this thing called like a vaco ped boot. It looks like a ski boot, right? And it, hold, it it's the it's, it's, it's modern version of a cast, right? Okay. Even now, but back in the day more so, they put you in a cast and over time they slowly... You start your like, your foot's here and over time they slowly bring it back until you're a normal like plantar yeah. grade, which is just how you would be normally. The boot does the same thing. It has a little adjustable thing. So every week you change it and you slowly so, bring your foot up okay, okay. over the course of six weeks. But okay. Because it's got a, because it's uh, locked you in that position and it's got a big like fucking triangular Herman Munster heel, you can walk. So I was walking st almost straight away like with mm. a ruptured Achilles, which is, again, going back to that healing, your Achilles just heals thick and strong as yeah, well because yeah, it's got yeah, that yeah, stimulus straight away, which is, yeah, that's a game changer. Because like I said, m back in the day, but even still now, some people in the NHS will just be told to do nothing. Elevate, I had a guy that messaged me, and was like, he was, he had nine weeks of just sitting with his foot up. He didn't, did not put his foot on the floor for nine weeks. It's the safest thing for the NHS because majority of them are coming out of university fresh. They're going to that job. They've actually got, Yeah, sounds bad, but like not many, not I as think it's as well because <clears throat> if you're in a hospital, you don't want to see people again. And uh, if you were to think a less extreme, <clears throat> they're overloaded with work. Yeah, so you, this way, you know, so I had this discussion yesterday with uh, our mate, Dr. Nadolsky, where I said meal replacement shakes, they're not meals. I was like, plain simple, that's a shake, it's not a meal. I don't like the idea of someone going for dinner, I had a shake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like and, a little tablet in the future. Where you're yeah, 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 someone was like, well, uh, what if it's a tablet? I'll go, you'd be happy with your kids sitting down for a tablet with you at dinner? Fuck off. But then he goes, actually, the studies have shown the 600 calorie shakes reverse obesity, type 2 diabetes. I go, yes, I agree. But that is not something we can promote to other everyday people. But I do understand, you're a GP, you're in a clinic. You're seeing 50 people today for 10 minutes each. You can't go through... Fats nine, yeah, carbs yeah. four. I appreciate their position to say yeah, have yeah, these yeah. shakes and a sack send a fucking jab. See you later. Hopefully never. Same with these guys. So swamped. And it sounds bad. They care about you because they want you to walk again, but they don't care enough about you about your sport career because it doesn't benefit them or their pace. Yeah, I, th I think a lot of their practice and their guidelines <laughs> is based on the average person who doesn't need to be functional. They, if they if their Achilles heals two centimeters longer, who gives a fuck? It doesn't you know sitting down on a computer doesn't it's not going to inhibit that. Do you know what I mean? So for them Agreed. it doesn't matter, and they naturally err on the side of caution. Do you know what I mean? Like for me, it, squatting when I did and dead if when I did like of course it's a bit of a risk, but like it's a calculated risk and. The, the it's a you know it's a risk and reward thing. As a result of that, I'm now way further down the line than I would be yeah. ordinarily. Do you know what I mean? I'm so better. Yeah, so I've accepted that risk. I've tried to control it as much as I can. I'm in the gym by myself. There's no one fucking near me. I'm being careful, but like that that versus just doing nothing, the chance of re rupture for me is higher doing those things. But in the long term, my prognosis is way better because I've got stronger earlier. Yeah. I've, you if you spend three months not touching your calf. You'll never get that ma that that muscle mass will never come back. Yeah. It's not happening. Do you know what I mean? would have done so, the same for sure. I would have done yeah. the same for sure. And if you re-ruptured it doing deadlift, you'd be like, "Well, I fucking was doing what was right for me." If you re-ruptured it after nine months off, you'd be like, "I fucking knew it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, also, like, I think it's outwardly seems like more of a risk than it is a squat, more so because again that doors deflection. But like, uh, I sumo deadlift. Like, the the it's a it's a fucking it's it's not a very mad move. Like. Different if I was like, oh, I'm going to go and play football, I'm going to go and run up and down stairs. But oh, it's different. That's yeah. what's going to, it's, it's, it's pretty controlled. I've been deadlifting for, I've done about a million deadlifts in my life. The, the movement pattern is exactly yeah. the same every single time. Like Football's not controlled, which is why it happens. Yeah, you get some <laughs> monster come in and plow through you. What You can't account for that. But what yeah. I'm doing, unless my ceiling collapses, nothing's going to change, nothing deviates. So it's a very controlled, mm. safe environment. So I feel like it's a pretty, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a manageable risk, basically. So we were saying before about getting you over to the dark side. You ever done jiu-jitsu before? I haven't, mate. I've done... I did karate when I was about eight years old, and I think I had, like, 
proper old school karate instructor that wasn't very nice. And that. Do, you, think, do you know much about it? Um, I have a very, very minimal understanding. Because like, we're converting people at a yeah. quick rate. And we'll have to do a vlog. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure. I love the thought. Like even playing football. Like I, it, it's a shame because I was fucking enjoying that so much. Like that was one of the fun times. Mm-hmm. It was like sick. Do you know what I mean? I like. I've always played. I played football at school, but I've been well, from from the point that I switched to athletics. All, all the sport I did was like individual, which I love. Like I love having control of what I'm doing and not relying on others. But you obviously miss that, like you know, camaraderie, sports, blah blah yeah, blah. Yeah, course, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think your personality, he'll probably agree. You start off as a white belt, you don't know what's going on, and it is fun because you're actually having a full on like rough and tumble with another man, sometimes yeah. women. But then things don't go right, so you go away and you find some escapes, and you go training the next day, and the escape works. Then you go on YouTube and find a submission and you get it on your partner and they turn around and go, what was that? And you're like, I got you. And then you're on this journey of like, it, it's tough because it takes you away from physique. It takes you away from strength. Yeah. It becomes learning and tricking people and setting things up. But the actual sport is very relaxed. It's very fluid. It's very camaraderie. And it's very addictive because it is in essence a game of human chess. The workout is insane. It's yeah. good. But like, We'll do that as a vlog. You'd be like, I tried jiu yes. Yeah, mate, I'll be all over it. I've, also, I've always been very intrigued, yeah, with those kind of sports or that in particular. When when you're, like, trying to submit someone, yeah, what, like, so let's say, for example, you're fucking whatever, you're holding their their ankle or whatever. Like, what, like, you're, like, how does that, like, if someone just doesn't submit, are you just snapping their ankle? What, mm. what do you mean? How does that you, work? You would, you'd probably just wait. So let's say uh, the belts are obviously a big thing. If I'm with yeah. a white belt, he might not know that I'm submitting him. Because when your arm's stretched, like in an arm bar, you feel a stretch in your bicep. He doesn't realize he's three inches away from breaking his arm because he's just not wanting to get arm barred. The higher belts, as soon as the arm goes past 90 degrees, a lot of them will just tap. With an ankle, let's say I'm, I'm dorsiflexing the foot in a submission. If my partner doesn't know his ankle's about to go, you just let go and go for something else. Because yeah. if you're better than that person, you'll get another submission. And a strangulation, they don't have a choice to tap or they go to sleep. So... So I, mean, so I can't get my head know, around but that. you would know. You're like, oh, okay, well, the elbow, you can flex this way. And so if, I, if any more than this, I'll break. You'll the tap. thought you'll of that know. scares me. Like, yeah, like, I At don't know. At competition, like... if you're in a final and there's a gold or silver medal on the line and the person's not tapping, yeah. But training's always a very safe environment where, you know, you don't want less training partners. You want as many training partners yeah. as you can. Yeah. And, like, what's fun is, like, even if Darren and I are rolling, we used to roll really crazy with each other. Yeah. But now we're super relaxed. Yeah, we're yeah. calm. We use each other to warm up. And then say I'm going for a submission. Instead of putting it on the armbar, I'll put it on 75% and wait for him to escape. Because then when he escapes, it benefits his escape drill. It benefits yeah, my yeah, reaction yeah. drill. Yeah. And you then you end up in this like little dance. But what's amazing is everyone in jiu-jitsu has the same rule set, but how you perform it is your own art. So similarly in football, but you kind of got to strike the ball the same way. You got to get in the position the yeah. same way. With, with it, anyone can interpret those rules, which are very big and nuanced, and project it their own way. Some people like sitting on their bum. Some people like doing yeah. takedowns. And that expression of art is so beautiful because artists have a canvas. They all have a canvas. Yeah. They all have a 2D surface to work on. Some obviously 3D, but how they use their colors on that canvas portrays how they're feeling. And we get to do that in a nature of manhandling, submitting, finding yeah, routes. Yeah. And that is really... Like, there is a thing too, that same as like rugby, though, you know, even like powerlifting, that's what, that, you know, that kind of just like underlying like fucking primal, like, do you know what I mean? Just literally fucking just grabbing someone role. or rugby plowing through someone or just picking up a massive thing, that, that feeling of just, do you know what I mean? And it's not because you want to hurt them. I mean, you know in rugby, you're putting a big hit on someone. If I did that in a game, I'm helping that guy up. Yeah, yeah. And with jits, it's very much the same. Yeah. Like you're in this together and then even if you roll them someone. And the other thing is, we pack our belts when we travel. We can go into any gym in the world. Yeah, it's great. Not because we've got followers, but because we love the sport. So when you walk in with a blue belt, a purple belt, brown belt, someone's like, this guy's dedicated eight years to the thing that I love as well. Come in. Would you like to get a coffee? Do you need somewhere to go for dinner or whatever? Yeah, yeah. So like, the more people we can convert to that. The... Do, you, do you get hurt? Like, so if you're, whatever, in an armbar, whatever, I think like, are you like, oh, my arm hurts now because he's just... What you, know what, you know what gets you hurt? Your ego. Yeah. Your ego gets you hurt in jiu-jitsu. In jiu-jitsu, if you're if you've got a very big ego, you'll be yeah. humbled very quickly. And it's a great way actually to find out more about who you are. And it also shows the other person what sort of kind of person you are when you're rolling. You can tell yeah. a lot by someone with the way you roll with them, right? Either if they've got a huge ego, if sometimes if it's the sort of person that would just let things go, if it's the sort of person that would just tap when they're supposed to but yeah. they will learn over time it will humble them and you'll be all right but say for you for example if we were rolling 
my my job is to look after you. You're a white belt. Yeah. I'm there as a high level athlete. I should be looking after you because if I don't, number one, I'm gonna have shit training partners in my gym moving forward. And number two, I don't want to scare you from the sport. Yeah, I yeah, want yeah. you in the sport so I can batter oh. you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I can roll with you, and it's, it just makes it even better. But that you'll know, you'll know, you know. Trust me, you know when. I to feel tap. like I'd be tapping because I, I'd be like, like I said, scared of fucking damn it. I'd be like, I said. I'm... But then if someone's putting it on that hard, you you pick the wrong person. Like last night, all the coloured belts. I made sure I smashed them, but there was this white belt I rolled with. So instead of like just murdering him, I just put myself in between his legs and I was like, cool, let's see what we can do. And I could see how excited he was. And I could tell it was this like World Cup. He's like, I've got a purple belt and a triangle. He actually put that triangle on really, really well. Tyler Strong, who's good. And yeah, then, good. but then I was like, for me, I don't need to use my ego against this guy. He's a white belt. But when there's a purple belt, I was like, Rob, we've both been trained in a similar level. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be on. Yeah. But like, like he says, you, there are so many people that play the nice guy. Hey, mate, how are you? Yeah, nice to meet you. But then they come for you. And you're like, oh, you're not the same person that just said hello to me 10 minutes yeah. ago. And that's a really interesting thing to see. But it's also sick. I imagine it's sick because, like, it's hard to look at someone and engage their ability. Do you know what I mean? You get people that, like, maybe will be, like, a, a, a normal-looking guy, then they're fucking amazing, mad. Man. And conversely, you get someone that's, like, jacked, but they're not that good. Like, whereas, not as, you know, powerlifting, but those kind of lifting events, you can generally sit. Someone's got a big bench press, probably going to be able to see that. Big squat, probably see that. If you're sick of jujitsu, it wouldn't necessarily be immediately obvious, Bro, right? the beauty of it, right? Like, you'll see... <laughs> You see, like, I remember I was rolling with a black belt a few weeks ago in the morning, 7 a.m. class. He's a skinny kind of oldish guy, black belt. Yeah. Absolute killer. Yeah. He walked out with his work outfit, right? Like this corporate guy. The dorkiest looking guy. Yeah. And in my head, I was like, if anyone messes yeah, with this guy, yeah, it yeah. is game over. That's and sick, I yeah. think there's something so beautiful about that, yeah. you know? That's sick. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a great one. I do always like spending these opportunities to convert even just one person at a time. <laughs> Talk to us about, um, you know, as we like wrap this up to an end, what's the future looking like for you? What you got ahead working on any projects? Yeah, I've got a couple. We've got a big, we've got a big Morsia thing coming in not too far. As yet. long as it's not a fitness app, plug away. No, it's not a fitness app. Tell us about it's, it. Tell us about it. It's like, it, we're not ready to really say what it is yet, okay. but it's going to be, yeah, we're, we are going live in like, not even that long, you know, like less than two months. It's gonna be fucking sick. Sick. Extremely excited for that. We got like we're like we're trying to like we're building a house, so like that's pretty exciting. That's happening now. It's taking a long time. But... Watch his videos so we can get more people to work on the house. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that'll be sick. That's like I feel like building a house is a that's up there with cool things because it's like we like we could have gone and got a house, but we've we've committed now to knocking a house down and building like a mad house. So that's gonna be exciting because that's like house you mean it's what you live in i am like, man i build house yeah, that yeah. Minute. <laughs> well, it's just like i don't know building your own house is sick because you're literally just choosing what you're do you know what I mean? yeah yeah yeah. Cool. you're not having to put up with like weird shit that you, do you know what I mean? wouldn't necessarily do yourself so that's gonna be cool um yeah and then like i said i, I very much moving to uh, have moved towards like just trying to make life more sustainable and like it sounds like corny as fuck but you know just like enjoy stuff have a good time rather than like it's very easy like when you enjoy lots of your job um, and you're addicted to, you know, I get addicted to like growth and like, oh, this is going well, let's do more of that. Like, it's very easy just to slip into a thing of just spending all your fucking waking hours doing it. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. trying to move more towards like just relax, you know, doing normal shit and like having a good time and being present and like, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, just making life more sustainable and like, yeah. We're, it's a constant battle for us. What was the quote you used the other day? Which one? You don't have to be everywhere. You don't have to. Yeah. It's like Ryan Holiday was saying, like, all of these pressures you set yourself. Yeah, the just feeling, be. Yeah. Just be. Yeah. Like, a, but, but, but then that, I think that's, that has a role. Yeah. It plays a part. If you didn't have that underlying thing, then you'd probably be a bum. Do you know what I mean? So it's good to like do that to an extent, but it's knowing when to switch it off and when to. If I mean? was if I was a caveman, I would want the biggest teepee. I'd want the most skulls yeah. outside my tent. Yeah. I don't I'd, mean caveman teepees. I think that's like. All right. We're well, don't. Cave. Like, what, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> if you had a TV, that would be sick, you know. What, did you teach history, history <laughs> did you? Humanity <laughs> <Okay, no. laughs> class, is it? Yeah. But I think in your early, like, now you can do that. But, like, I remember teens, 20s, I was like, I need to be a footballer. I need to do my 10K a day. I need to train. I need to hustle. Yeah. That, And then once you build something, yeah. then you can kind of chill a bit and then have yeah. those peaks. Whereas, again, you're right. If you're Serve very the much like You've that, got to get to that point, right? You, yeah. can't just, you can't just start day one and be like, right, let's just relax. Let's, let's enjoy yeah, life. You become then... a waste man. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that does fuck all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Sick. Well, thank you very much for coming on. Thank That's you, Darren, for co hosting. That's right, bruv. So no problem. That was good fun. Thank you. All right. I've uh I've got for today, I'm gonna do the thumbnail by taking three photos of each That's guest weird, by the taking mic. Taking the headphones off, by the way. You know what I mean, Darren? So like Oh like bang, bang, bang. Yeah. Yeah. So like you, you can pull a face if you want. So I'm gonna remove the background, innit? Yes, yeah, this is what every YouTube thumbnail. Back in the day I used to